They go to the big fella and he puts it up and in. Yeah, Darius he, Brown finds big youth. Yeah, because, that, on Demania. because of that hustle, Darius rewarded him. Pekka is picked, has his pocket picked by TJ Starks. Here's Atten right back the other way. In the lane to Brown, extra pass. Merk Veladze rattles it in. How about that? Brown made a very nice pass and I didn't think Merk Veladze was going to be able to finish it. But uh, Darius did. Right corner three for Hendricks, yes. Wow, that's his spot. And Dar I mean, and TJ Starks found him once again. Right baseline, Artest. Artest underneath, leans in, and nice. the right hand shot is good. Nice shot by Artest. Didn't try to fall away, went to and up high for the shot. Brown down the right side of the lane. Lobs for Undermania, who puts it down. And they could have called a foul on that, but that time Festus made it up with going up high and putting that in softly. Starks, top of the circle, whips underneath. Extra pass to Merck Veladze in the paint, lays it up. I like in. that extra pass, and I like the fact that Merck Veladze finished it. That was important for the Matadors. Now can they get a stop? Right into the right corner. Ten seconds on the shot clock for the Matadors. Darius using the screen out to the right wing. Seven to shoot for CSUN. Darius deep NBA three, and that's money. Wow. You, I didn't expect that. Darius Brown drained a deep three. Now it's just defense. Play defense. Magnon, five seconds to play against Starks at midcourt. Dancing to his left. Left wing Fuller. Fuller leans into the three. No good. There was some doubt as to whether there was some contact. At and right was isolated on him. And the Matadors escape with yes. an 80 to 77 win yeah. over UC Davis. A hard fought, good team win, AZ. You you know, you come up with the right words at the right time. The escape is absolutely right. I tell you, nice free throw make by Starks. Good defense by Starks, not allowing Manion to get a direct line to the basket. So, and because there were no timeouts, Manion could do nothing but just do his very, very best to try to get uh, the ball towards the rim. The following digital content is produced by the CSUN Sports Network and presented by Dignity Health Northridge Hospital Medical Center. CSUN Matador Sports Properties and Learfield IMG College would like to thank the following corporate partners. Dignity Health Northridge Hospital, Under Armour, Northridge Toyota, Buffalo Wild Wings, True Barber Shop, Mid Valley Dental Care, The Warner Center Marriott, AAA Flag and Banner, Meridian Point, The Airtel Plaza Hotel, oh, and because there were no time The Sundial, and Sisto Sports Medicine. Welcome to the Matadome. Gazal Hassan with you along with Alan Zinsmeister. The pregame brought to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. AZ, we just heard some highlights from yesterday. Hard-fought win for the Matadors against UC Davis. That's the good news. The other news is you got to turn around 22 hours later and do it again. Exactly. You know, I think maybe for the Matadors it might be better that they didn't have near a double-digit win because they will uh, now have the attention uh, of this Davis squad. Davis is a wonderful team. Had the Matadors maybe won by nine to ten points, and because the game really was uh, was as close as the final score, maybe they wouldn't have uh, their mindset right this afternoon. But I think they will, because now they understand how tough this uh, Aggie squad is. They came back from double di digits, because all. Yeah, I, you know, and I don't want to say too much. We kind of went over everything in the post game yesterday in the pregame, but I'm going to mention two things. Um, the last time the Matadors beat Davis twice in a calendar year was in 2010. That was a bit tricky because they beat them in the 2010 season in March, and then remember 2010, 2011, the league schedule started in December. So they actually beat the Aggies in March of 2010, and then in December of 2010, two straight wins spread over two seasons. The last time they beat him consecutively in the same season was in 2009, the year the Matadors went to the NCAA tournament the last year under Bobby Braswell. In both 2008 and 2009, CSUN swept UC Davis. So they're, they're going for a sweep, AZ, for the first time in a long time. And it's going to be hard to get. I mean, that just lets you know how difficult it is to sweep a team that's so talented and well-coached. So, uh, But that's what the Matadors want to do today. They want to be able to at least get well on their home, for, home court 
because, you know, they were swept by Santa Barbara, so they need to get this win, Gazal. Uh, and the second quick note before we get to Z's keys is um, CSUN, if they win today, they'll be over 500, 8 and 7. The last time they were over 500 this deep in the season was back in 2014. Our good friend Reggie Theus' first year, they were also 8 and 7 after uh, 15 games. I know that doesn't mean a whole lot in the scope of things, but I think for a team that's gone through what they went through early in the season, um, to be 8-7 and seven now after some of the you know, fits and starts with the schedule and then with injuries, it would be really great for the Matadors. But without any further ado, Alan Zinsmeister, it's what the people pay the good money for. <laughs> Z's Keys brought to you by the Ph.D. of the Hardwood. Dr. Z, Alan Zinsmeister, presented to you by the Good Hands people at Allstate. What do we got? What are the keys to victory for you the know, Matadors? We're going to go back to old school, Gazal, because we talked about defense yesterday, and it is about defense. But, no, it's just a matter of the Matadors playing hard, playing smart, and playing together. They are going to have to do that. You've got to go back to the basics when you're playing such a solid team that is going to come in here this afternoon, in my opinion, and really give the Matadors all they can handle. All right. Uh, that is uh, Alan Zinsmeister. He has spoken. When we come back, Mark Godfrey joins us as part of Matadors pregame with the coaches report brought to you by Bid Valley Dental Care, the official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. This is Matadors Basketball on the CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. At Dignity Health Northridge Hospital, patients recently participated in their own summer rehab games. Every two years, the Center for Rehabilitation Medicine holds an event for patients who are recovering from brain and spinal cord injuries. The games are designed to help patients achieve treatment goals, including balance, coordination, endurance, and social interaction. Patients heal and conquer goals in many ways. This event is just another way the Center connects with patients on a human level. Share your acts of human kindness on social media using hashtag HelloHumanKindness. Mid-Valley Dental Care is proud to be the official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. Doctors Casey and Terrence Lau have been listening, caring, and explaining for over 44 years. Just blocks from the CSUN campus at 8815 Reseda Boulevard, Mid-Valley Dental Care specializes in athletes' dental care, as well as cosmetic, orthodontia, oral surgery, and dental implants. Make your appointment today at midvalleydentalcare.com, official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. Welcome back to the Matadome, Matador's pregame from Dignity Health. Time now for the coach's report. Mark Godfrey joins us. The coach's report, as always, brought to you by Mid Valley Dental Care, the official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. Uh, good win yesterday for you guys. The quick turnaround today, a couple hours. Normally it's a 24 hour, it's 22 hours. That make any sort of difference, or it's just, hey, we got a game to play, guys, let's go? No, I think you just got to play. You know, same for both teams. So, uh, you know, part of the, the year this year, it's an unusual year, and the way we're playing games, back-to-back -back nights, uh, you know, you got to be ready to play. And uh, guys understand it, and so uh, hopefully we'll be ready to go today. Now, real quick, I'm going to take a step away for a second. So obviously the schedule has been changing all year, and you know, I don't think you guys get enough credit for how you've managed that schedule, even though the team's had a couple of long, you know, droughts in terms of games. Now, originally we were supposed to play next week at Grand Canyon, that is not happening now. I'm guessing you guys are still efforting potential opponents for next week. Well, uh, what's happened on that is the uh, conference, the Big West, has uh, kind of put a mandate in that we can only uh, make up our conference games on the weekends. So the fact that we've, uh, you know, we've missed the Irvine and Long Beach and uh, UC San Diego games, you know, we have to leave that weekend open um, in hopes that, you know, somebody pops free and they can play. And uh, so. You know, it's one of those, uh, you know, weird things, even from a scheduling standpoint. We may not know till next Friday afternoon uh, mm -hmm. that somebody might be able to play on Saturday. <laughs> so it's just the way it is. We'll have to wait and see what happens next weekend. Uh, if it ends up that we end up having uh, no games, then uh, we'll use it to our advantage to practice and get healed up and, you know, get ready to go for the stretch. Yeah, Coach, and we've noticed, Alan and I have both noticed, I mean, you're having to go really deep in a rotation and, just the last couple of years, obviously, with the personnel you had. Um, I know you, you guys prefer to, you know, seven, eight guys, but there are games now you're playing 10, 11 guys really out of necessity, partially because you don't know who's going to be available. And then, like yesterday, for example, Miles starts, and then, he, you know, obviously he wasn't 100%, so you need to go to him. Um, now, obviously, that's something that's a challenge for you because you're not kind of used to doing that. How is that on the players? I mean, is it just, is it that much <coughs> more important for them to be ready? 
Well, I think for the players, you know, they all want to play. And so, uh, you know, our message is just you got to be ready. And uh, it is a different type of year. It's very unusual. And uh, and then on top of the fact that the COVID and the, the strange schedule, you know, we have had a lot of, you know, injuries. You know, Lance obviously hasn't played now in a while. Rod missed so much time. Miles has been in and out. TJ missed two games. You know, we've had a lot of that. So I think everybody just needs to be ready. That's been the message for them. And, uh you got to step up, and if your name's called upon, you got to play. And uh, different for us as coaches, not something that we're typically, you know, to like to do. I like a smaller rotation, but I think uh, this year uh, it's just a different type of year for a lot of different reasons. You know, Coach, starting the year, the questions about CSUN were all about, well, how do you replace, you know, Janae G- Gomez and, and Harkless? And I think a lot of those questions were in regard to scoring. But I think, you know, at least two of those guys, Elijah and Lamine, never really got enough credit for how, you know, good they are defensively in terms of setting the tone. Now, I think you have some personnel that can do it this year, and the last couple of games they've shown it. Um, let's discuss for a little bit, I mean, Ron, his potential kind of as a defensive stopper, and then we talked a little bit about Vonta yesterday. But those two guys, when they're engaged, Coach, they really seem to set the tone for you guys on the defensive side. Well, they give us some athleticism and quickness and length. You know, both Vontae and Ron, you know, have length. I think, uh, you know, Vontae guarded the little guy, and, you know, we wanted to, you know, put a bigger body on him yesterday. And then I think Ron, you know, he just has to get more comfortable. He just hadn't played very many basketball games this year at all. And, you know, we talked about it with Miles and with, uh, you know, Ron. Part of their thing is conditioning. You know, they just haven't played enough and practiced enough to get themselves into great basketball shape because they've missed so much time. But, you know, uh, we do have some guys, uh, you know, defensively, I think, that can be, be uh, pretty good. We can pressure the ball when we have our quicker lineups in the game. Uh, one area where we still have to do a better job is rebounding. You know, it's not been a strength of this team, and we got to figure out how to get rebounds collectively as a group or some individuals got to step up and get some. So um, that's probably the biggest question right now is we lost. You know, you got to remember – People remember how good of a scorer Lamine was, and then Elijah really late in the year did such an amazing job. But, you know, those guys rebounded the ball really well, especially Lamine. So we really haven't uh, shored up our rebounding deficiencies yet this year, and we got to do a better job. And then last thing, uh, Coach, you get the win yesterday, the quick turnaround today. What are the two or three most important things you need to emphasize? You've been good, you and Coach Herrick and the entire staff, you guys have been really good with kind of keeping the team off their feet and really reading, you know, how this team works. You guys know your personnel better than anybody. What are the important things you win yesterday? What are the important things for them to repeat from yesterday today on the quick turnaround? Well, there's always good and bad. You know, we pressured the ball pretty well yesterday, and they only made two threes until the kid Fuller made one late, you know, in the game. And really, you know, I thought that was a, a big plus for us. We didn't give up a lot of points from behind the line. Um, but we've got to do a better job on Fuller today. You know, the kid gets 30, and he, I think he, he drew 11 fouls, I think it was, throughout the game and got to the line well. And uh, we've got to do a better job. We may have to couple, cover down and double him a little bit here and there. Uh, at the same time, uh, we've got to run our offense. You know, they do a really nice job, you know, executing uh, their defensive plan. And so patience is going to be a key at times. You know, we did score 80 yesterday, and I think in down the stretch, we were not very good from the foul line. So, uh, you know, we did a lot of things well, scored enough points. We just have to make sure we guard him a little bit better and uh, not let Fuller have the type of day he got yesterday. All right, Coach, good luck uh, today. Mark Godfrey joining us on the pregame. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Tonight's starting lineups and opening tip are presented to you by Northridge Toyota. With over 700 new certified and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs to choose from, they're sure to have one that's just right for you. Come in and see why Northridge Toyota is the fastest growing Toyota dealership in the San Fernando Valley. Northridge Toyota, big enough to count, small enough to care. Located at Nordoff across the street from the Northridge Mall and proud supporters of CSUN Athletics. Sal Hassan, Alan Zitzmeister with you at the Matadome. Second of two between UC Davis and uh, CSUN. The Matadors take the first one yesterday, 80-77. We mentioned starting lineups, opening tip brought to you by Northridge Toyota. 19550 Nordoff, the fastest growing dealership 
in the San Fernando Valley for the visiting Aggies in the backcourt. Ezra Magnon, he is the fine 5'11 sophomore, Antioch, California, by way of Heritage High School in Brentwood, California, the Sacramento area. He was the Big West Freshman of the Year last year. Joining him, Cameron Bob, Bob a 6'3 sophomore, Alameda, California, St. Joseph of Notre Dame. In the front court, Elijah Pepper. Pepper, a six foot four sophomore, Sella High School in Sella, Washington. Up, also up front, Christian Anegwe. Anegwe, a six foot nine junior from Phoenix, Arizona. And the man in the middle, Kennedy Kohler. Kohler, six seven senior from Las Vegas, Nevada. Tenth year for Jim Les at the helm of UC Davis. Mark Gottfried in his third year at the helm of CSUN. The Matador starting lineup, Darius Brown, TJ Starks. Vontae Hendricks gets the start today along with Festus Andamania and Ron Artest the third. So the Matadors going athletic. No Miles Brookings today for the Matadors. No Damian Squire today for UC Davis. Yeah, I think what the Matadors want to do also is start uh, with some good defense, and that's why they have Hendricks in. They need Hendricks to try to stop Mignon. Our officiating crew today, Robert Staffan, Mark Fulton, Matthew Rakesen. So an early wrinkle as an egg way underneath against Undemania gets the layup. They're moving Ezra Magnon off the ball. They had Cameron Bach handle the ball at the point off the first possession. And that's why they were able to have that easy score. The Matadors probably weren't ready for that offensive set. It's an adjustment. Mark Godfrey yesterday had Vontae Hendricks guard Magnon, 6'4", guarding 5'10". So the adjustment coming from Jim Les today to have Cameron Bach handle the ball initially. Left baseline, here's our test, kicks to the left wing. Little two-man game, the 15-footer short off the front rim, and immediately Artest fouls Kennedy Kohler. Yeah, that was a nice look for Artest. His shot is uh, always flat because he tends to shoot the ball on the way down as opposed to when he's uh, at the height of his jump. So it can be a little bit flat, but, but it was straight as can be. So uh, Artest, that's a shot that he likes, and he can hit that shot. You know, Alan, Mark Godfrey mentioned this to us a couple times, and we forget. You know, I think right now Ron Artest has played about 32 college games. Yeah, I mean, Ron Artest, and look, they need him to start because he can defend. Yep. He's uh, and, and, you know, he can score around the basket, too. So they've got to get some production out of Mr. Artest. Left wing, Ba pulls the trigger on three, and it's 5 to nothing Aggies. Yeah, the Aggies are, have come out ready, and the Matadors are a little kind of sleepwalking right now. You don't want this Aggie team to get out to a double-digit lead. You better the, get a score of this trip down. The Aggies, AZ, pretty good on the back end of back-to-backs. They're 2-1 and one on the back-to-backs as Undemania denied at the rim by Anegwe. The rebound comes out to Kohler for Davis. Their one loss was last week against Santa Barbara. They lost that game in overtime but probably should have won it in regulation. Ironically enough, they missed a couple of free throws. Yeah, and they didn't miss many free throws against the Matadors last night. That's for sure. I mean, they're the number one free throw shooting team in the conference. They came in yesterday at nearly 80%. 5 to nothing, Davis. Little slip screen, screen and roll underneath. Anegwe, a little bit out of control. He gets it, but he was on the baseline. He gets the, the carom off the underside of the backboard. Well, Matadors basketball. You know what, Gazal? He just out-hustled the Matadors. The ball was on the floor. It hit the floor, and he was the only one who actually went, came from out of bounds to grab it. So that's not a good sign for the Matadors at the start of this game. They better rebound and uh, guard a little bit better in the post. If you missed this yesterday... Uh, the teams between the two of them, Allen, shot 63 free throws as Hendricks gets fouled out on the right side. Now, Robert Staff and Mark Fulton, Matthew Rakesen, we've seen Rakesen. I don't recall ever seeing any other two officials. So I'm guessing it was the first time they'd seen these two teams, which resulted in a lot of whistles yesterday. A lot of whistles, and I guess they just thought it was a lot of physical play. I'm wondering if they'll let them play a little bit today, AZ. Usually that's the trend. You, you rarely see games back-to-back -back called in that way. Left side, Brown for CSUN. Five to nothing, Davis. We've played two minutes here at the Matadome. Hendricks, 15-footer, way off to the right side. Kohler with a defensive rebound for Davis. Well, right now the Matadors aren't getting a chance to get the kind of looks and the shots that they want from their shooters. But uh, Davis is right like that. Right wing three from Ba, and that falls. You know, Ba yesterday was one for six. He's a good three-point shooter. His stats don't say it, but he is a three-point shooter. I watched him in warm-up. Eight to nothing, the Matadors trail. And you and I both knew that this game could start like this. Davis on top, 8-0. Here Starks in front. Starks dispossessed, but he regains it. TJ gets it into Andamania. Extra pass to Artest, strong to the basket. And Kohler with the foul. That's a good foul for UC Davis. That's a smart foul, but UC Davis has come out on fire, Gazal. Look at them. They are guarding. The Matadors have had nothing easy. Artest is not a great free throw shooter. They would not allow him to have an easy layup. They're saying make it from the free throw line. Ba has already made two three-point shots, and they've scored around the basket. This is a tight game that they needed to play. 
limited sample. Ronnie, three of six from the free throw line. That one bricks out off the back iron in the first substitution. George Gervin checks in. Oh, no, excuse me, it's Caleb Fuller. He, lo <laughs> he looked like George Gervin yesterday as Kohler sits. Second foul on the Aggies, the first on Kohler. Now, this is a free throw that's important to the Matadors. They need to get this one to go. And it spins down for Ronnie, one for two. The Matadors on the board nearly three minutes into this game. Davis, eight, CSUN, one. Nearing 17 minutes to play in the first half. First look at Caleb Fuller, the Englishman from Ipswich. He likes playing against the Matadors. Manion. Out to Fuller, directing traffic. Magnon against Hendricks to the basket. Deflected on the way up. The ball still loose down. Darius Brown took, thought he had it, but taken away by Enigwe. Taken away from him by Hendricks. Hendricks sits up trying to look for a guy, and he finds Starks. That's a nice pass to Starks. That's rough and tumble. And in transition, Starks trying to get it to Darius Brown through his hands. Fuller for Davis off to Ba. Check that. That's Pepper. Pepper lays it up and in. Yeah, well, the Matadors right now are in big trouble because if you have a fast break and you're not able to get a shot up on it, back come the uh, Aggies with a score. High post, right side, Undemani had a big game yesterday. Festus, left side, Hendricks catch and shoot three. Short to the left side, tipped out by Undemani, right into Cameron Boss hands for Davis. He'll push, filling the lane. Oh, nice little Euro step, left hand reverse, yeah. left to right, or right to left, excuse me. And Elijah will call him <laughs> the red hot chili pepper. He's got two straight buckets under the bridge for Pepper, and it's 12 to one timeout, Mark Godfrey. Okay, so now the Matadors got the Aggies' attention yesterday, and <laughs> Coach Godfrey had to call a timeout. And look, you and I know this Aggie squad. I had a chance to to talk with one of the coaches earlier, and, and this, they're ready. They're going to be ready to play. 16-13 to play first half. We'll step out and come right back. Matadors basketball, CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. At Dignity Health Northridge Hospital, patients recently participated in their own summer rehab games. Every two years, the Center for Rehabilitation Medicine holds an event for patients who are recovering from brain and spinal cord injuries. The games are designed to help patients achieve treatment goals, including balance, coordination, endurance, and social interaction. Patients heal and conquer goals in many ways. This event is just another way the Center connects with patients on a human level. Share your acts of human kindness on social media using hashtag HelloHumanKindness. Mid-Valley Dental Care is proud to be the official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. Doctors Casey and Terrence Lau have been listening, caring, and explaining for over 44 years. Just blocks from the CSUN campus at 8815 Reseda Boulevard, Mid-Valley Dental Care specializes in athlete dental care as well as cosmetic orthodontia oral surgery and dental implants. Make your appointment today at midvalleydentalcare.com, official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. Starks to the bench for the Matadors. Atten right checks in the six-foot freshman from Fairmont Prep in Anaheim. Left corner, this is Hendricks for CSUN. And you mentioned AZ. Davis looks locked in on defense. We'll get a look at BJ Shaw. And Undemania fumbles it away underneath. And he also gets called on a foul to compound it. You know, my stat monitor is not working, but I don't know how many turnovers that is for the Matadors, but I would think it's about three. So right now the Matadors can't even get up a shot. Well, that's actually the first turnover for the Matador is AZ. Seems like it's more than that. They are, they are 0 for 4 from the floor, and 5 of 8 is UC Davis, and Davis has the basketball. This is Magnon. And ba, Ba's been big, two three-pointers early. A little shimmy move. They have Atten right out on him. Here's Kohler facing the basket. Fuller against our test. Fuller nearly traveled, kicks it into the corner for Kohler for Davis. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Kohler. Posting up is Shaw. Shaw against Brown. The banker is too strong off the window. Andamania with the rebound. Darius had a big game and he turns it over. Trying to find Hendricks. Davis back the other way and takes it right back, does Darius. DB2 all the way down. He'll leave in the corner for right. So a little helter skelter, and the Matadors down big 12 to 1 here, Alan. But the Matadors need to get a score because uh, right now everything is going the way of the Aggies, and it's on the defense and offensive end. Hendricks all the way down underneath, and a late foul, offensive foul called, stepping in and drawing the charge is Fuller. And I, I just think Vontae's in his head. He's really 
quick and he's athletic and he can take the ball and swoop to the basket. I think that just minor hesitation allowed Fuller to slide in and draw the charge. We'll get our first look at Ron Pekka. Pekka from Estonia, got some, saw some action yesterday. Magnon and Pepe, Pepper leave the floor. Well, right now for the Matadors, it's just the defense of the Aggies. The Matadors are running their offense, and as Coach mentioned, look, this is a team that is going to be disruptive. So you have to be patient with your offense. Defensively for the Matadors, look, they know they're going to have to guard the entire shot clock because there's perpetual movement with this Aggie squad, especially on offense. Pekka getting some minutes because Damian Squire unavailable, probably the best on-ball defender for Davis. Kohler against Undemania. Here's the pump fake and the step through to L. That looked like a continuation foul. Yeah, it was a continuation Undem foul. It's going to be 14 to 1. And uh, that time, just a nice move. <laughs> I mean, Kohler got inside, made a nice move, got uh, Festus to bite on the head fake and scored it. This <laughs> I'm laughing because all because you and I know this Davis squad. You and I know that they were going to come out and play like this. And uh, I had a chance to talk with Eric Bankston, the sports information director uh, from from uh, the the Aggies from UC Davis, and he was kind of shy and saying, "Oh, they'll play better. I think they'll play better." He knew in his heart that it could be like this. Kohler misses the end one, 14 to one. Aggies on top of the Matadors. Starks back in for CSUN, who's yet to score a basket. Merck Faladze in, the 6'9 freshman from Modesto Christian, along with Fidelis Okereke. Okereke, the freshman from King Drew High from in the city of Los Angeles. Starks dribbling out, Kohler squaring him up, 10 to shoot for the Matadors. TJ, right wing right, steps into the three. Off to the left, offensive rebound Okereke, but he's dispossessed. Pepper comes away with it for Davis. And at midcourt, Fuller trying to avoid the charge against Brown, travels and turns it over. Darius Brown, nice job there inducing the travel. Yeah, the Matadors are trying to do a little bit better on defense, but offensively right now, they are really rushing themselves. They they have to just relax, just run your offense, set good screens, cut hard, and uh, and then when you get an open shot like Atten had, make it. And Atten is a good shoot shooter. If he gets that shot again, he'll make it. Darius to Atten, they're really out on him, though. They got Pekka hounding him from the baseline and an offensive foul on the Matadors. You know, I think right now, because of the effort, because of the energy the Aggies are showing on defense, they're getting all the calls. Because the Matadors are on their heels, they're not getting the calls. And that's what happens. Officials are human. They see a team that's aggressive and going forward, they give them the benefit of the doubt that they know what they're doing. Right now, the Matadors on their heels are just catching every, you know, jab and hook that are being thrown by the Aggies. Already seven fouls on the board. We're a little more than six minutes into this ball game. Aggies 14, CSUN 1, Pekka working against Wright. Here's Kennedy Kohler, the senior from Coronado High in Vegas. The Estonian in the right corner. Right of center. This is Kohler, 5 to shoot for Davis. Kohler down the stack. Strong to the bucket. How about that play? That's just a nice shot and good defense. And 16 to 1, Gazal. I mean, the Matadors could be blown out in the first 10 minutes of the ball game. Yeah, the shades of Santa Barbara. You don't want the game to get away from you. Less concerned about the score than the fact the Matadors haven't had a bucket and they won't have one there as the short baseline jumper by Brown is short to the left side. Caresses the iron right to Davis. Fuller terminates his dribble. Off to Kohler. Kohler left wing for B.J. Shaw. Shaw, the runner, short front rim. Starks clutches the rebound for CSUN. Under 13 minutes to play in the first half, right on the right wing. As soon as he catches the ball, Pepper's addressing him. Angle left, this is Brown. Darius into the lane. Right wing, wide open three for right. Yes. They needed that. I was going to say this. This this is a very important time for the Matadors to get stopped. They're going to have to get under double digits, I would think, by the eight-minute mark. Otherwise, this game might get away from them. Yeah, Magnon at the scorer's table will check in at the next dead ball. The Matadors could use a stop and a bucket here to kind of stem the tie. Fuller left of center. Trying to dribble handoff. It's denied, but nice job by Shaw underneath, and he lays it up and in. Yeah, what happened was that time uh, Starks tried to go for a steal, and he left his man for an easy layup. 18-4. to four. Davis on top, and they're getting out on the Matadors defensively. You could tell Jim Les challenged them. Top of the circle. Here's three for... Starks misfires to the left. And they will let allow Starks to have that. They will live with Starks taking that kind of shot, believe me. Pekka on the floor, taken away by Brett. They're still fighting for it. 
and a held ball. Matadors will get possession. So we'll get a break in the action with 11.50 to play in the first half. UC Davis 18, CSUN 4. Back with more Matadors basketball on the CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where I come to get great deals on my favorite cars. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where I get impeccable service with a smile. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where I go to feel at home. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where they have 64 service bays to fix any problem. Northridge Toyota, your neighborhood Toyota dealership. Northridge Toyota is located at 19550 Nordoff and is a proud supporter of CSUN Athletics. Hey Matadors, the Sundial is here to keep you connected to all things CSUN. As the student-run campus news outlet, we aim to be the voice of you, the CSUN community. The Sundial publishes fresh content online daily and timeless, community-focused stories in print every Wednesday. Check us out on the web at dailysundial.com or follow us on Twitter at Daily Sundial and on Instagram at The Sundial. It is the weekend, and you're here in the weekend, and the Matadors, they kind of needed to wake up a little more earlier today, AZ. They're down 18-4, to 4, <laughs> 11.50 to play in the first half. Yes, they are. I mean, they're shooting 12.5% to 61.5%, so they're, maybe they're fortunate to only be down by 14. The goal, I think, if you're CSUN here, Alan, is you want to be down by about six, make it a two-possession game by the half. Mark Veladze working against McGill. Look at how the stance, if, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching on TV, look how every Aggie is down in the stance. Merck Veladze strong to the basket over McGill, and McGill fouls Alex, who will go to the free throw line. Well, that was a nice, strong move by Alex to try to get a chance to score. But, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to watch the Aggie defense. People talk about defense. You play it with your feet, not with your hands. You don't reach. I want you to watch how all five of them on the defensive end are down in a stance, stance ready to go. They are just locked in today. Alex, that sweet Georgia stroke from the free throw line. The first free throw goes down. Coming into the ball game, Merck Veladze, 12 of 18, 67% from the free throw line. And the second one is good. And the Matadors to within 12, 18 to 6, 11.33 to play first half. Conversely, Manion let's back. see if the Matadors are going to get in the stance, because all. Manion back for Davis. In front, swings to the right wing. Here's the three from Ba. That one is off too strong. Offensive rebound, though, Pepper. Right back to Manion. Manion to the right side. And here's Ba. Davis up 12 on the Matadors. Matadors went to a zone defense, and that's why they had trouble getting that rebound. Here's the lob. Inegwe playing with it. The ball caroms out to Magnon. He's the Johnny on the spot. The short jumper off. Defensive rebound, Brown for CSUN. Darius lobs it ahead for Okereke. Put it up, big fella. Up and in for he, Fidelis. He dribbled the ball, yes. hesitated, but he was able to park the defenders and lay it up and well, in. Well, that's because they didn't want to foul, because they uh, have three team fouls, so they were smart not to foul. Matadors trailing by 10. 18 to 8 Aggies. Magnon off to Pepper. Ba on the right side. They spin it around to the left wing. Ezra to the basket. Two and one. Oh, he, my. He went to his left. He's a right-handed player, so you want to stay on his right hand, but he drove left to the baseline and just floated it over the outstretched hands of Okereke. So it was a very nice move, a very nice finish, and Ezra Magnon is an excellent ball player, and people in the Big West know about him. I think people on the West Coast will learn about him, and as he can, continues to get better, people nationally are going to know about this young fella. 85% free throw shooter, he improved. Last year he was at 76%. The and one is good, and it's a 13-point lead for the Aggies at 21-8. to eight. You know, when I knew Ezra Manuel was a player, obviously we saw him twice last year, but when Jim Herrick told us how yes. impressed he was with the yes. young man, yeah, that, that man, that's not faint praise. Jim Herrick has coached some pretty darn good point guards over the years. Here's Darius to the free throw line. Looking inside, needs some help, right wing, right Skips over the rim, Ba with a defensive rebound. Look at how they're crashing on the defensive side too, AZ. And look how they're getting out to the shooters. I mean, they're, they're just doing a wonderful job all the way around. This is Fuller left side. Fuller had 30 last night. Ba, the Matadors kept him in check, but he's been hot early. This is Pepper. 
Left-handed dribble into the lane, rises up. The 12-foot jumper. Well, he good. used the screen and got in the crease of the zone, and that's what you have to do with the zone. And the Matadors now trail by their largest deficit. You know, you have to get in the crease of the zone, and that's exactly what he did. Starks looking for Darius, kind of throws it behind him and throws it away. And the Matadors seem to be out of sync. Davis really has them rattled in terms of the offense. Look, I knew that Davis was going to be ready today, but I did not expect that Davis would come out and put this type of effort so early on the Matadors that they'd be up so big. And, and they are not going to let up, Gazal. From start to finish, you'll see this team play this way. Matadors are just going to have to match their intensity. Amon Anderson, his first play in a while. Into the ball game for T.J. Starks, the 6'3 freshman from Losinger. Left wing, Fuller, three. Misfires, Caroms to the right, run down by Anderson in the far corner. Amon Anderson brings the ball up the floor. Definitely looks more fluid than it did last time we saw him. Have been dealing with a hip issue. Left side, Brown for CSUN. Matador is down 15. Anderson, right corner, Merck Veladze, the corner three. Spins around the, the rim, no. Defensive rebound taken out by Anegwe for Davis. That was a nice shot. I just hoped I wanted that shot to go for young uh, Alex, but uh, no, uh, no break for him. Pepper. They spin it around to Magnon. Skip past Pepper left wing. Thought about three, but Anderson out to him in the zone. Right wing three. Magnon will shoot it. It pop, goes down and pops down, but the offensive rebound back up and in by Fuller. Well, this is just a crime now. You can't get defensive boards. That ball was right in the hand of, of a Karake. You've got to be tough. You've got to decide that the rebound is mine. And right now, the Matadors are walking off the court. And I mean walking. There's really no hustle, no get up, get up and go, because uh, all the get up and go has been snatched by the Aggies. The get up and go has got up and went. 8.26 to play in the first half. Matadors down 25-8. to eight. Back with more Matadors basketball on the CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. Ah, uh, smell that? It's playoff season. You know how you can tell? Because the playoffs are on. East will meet West, Sevens will be bested, and banners will be lifted. So get in your car, your boat, or your train, and get to b dubs To celebrate this special time of the year, curl up with some wings, warm up by the TV with your closest savages, and order a frosty beer just like Mom used to pour. Merry playoffs, everyone. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! CSUN Athletics would like to thank the Warner Center Marriott for their continued support. The newly re-energized Warner Center Marriott boosts nearly 500 rooms and a newly styled American restaurant. For room rates or reservations, call 818-887-4800. That's the Warner Center Marriott at 818-887-4800, supporting CSUN Matador Athletics. Gazal back with you, Matadors basketball. November 27th, Davis lost at Santa Clara in that cable car classic, 66-63. Turned around, played the next day, beat Idaho State 70-61. They lost at UC San Diego, did the Aggies on January 22nd by 20 points. They turned around the next day, won by 7, 78-71. They lost 72-51 uh, against UC Santa Barbara at home last Friday. Turned around, lost the next day in overtime, 89-86. But if they make a couple of free throws in regulation, they win that one. Yeah, Matadors beat the Aggies yesterday, and now they're putting a hurt into CSUN. They're up by 17. Jim, uh, Jim Herrick. Brendan Herrick into the game for CSUN, the 6'5 sophomore out of Esperanza. Here's Anderson to the baseline. Feathery jumper short to the left. Look at the box out by Kohler. Look at the box out. Look at the good defense. That was just a tough shot. The Matadors are not getting any easy looks. You need to dig your heels in here. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. Pepper out to Ba. Fuller with a touch. Kohler gives it back to Magnon. Right of center, Fuller. Down the right side of the lane, and a foul on the Matadors. Well, it's going to be one and one, and if Fuller's shooting the free throws, you know he's going to make them. Sometimes you just have to appreciate a team that's really firing on all cylinders. If you're watching this game, ladies and gentlemen, watch how the offense is flowing for the Aggies. What the Aggies are doing is they're moving, they're cutting, they're setting screens. Some of the screens may be illegal, but because they're doing it so quickly, the officials can't call it. And so their perpetual motion, given the Matadors, fits right now. 
coming in, 89% free throw shooter, was 15 of 17. Yesterday was Fuller, and he picks up right where he left off. It's an 18-point Davis lead, 26 to 8. Darius Brown gets a breather. Back into the ball game is TJ Starks. F uh, Fidelis Okereke with his second foul sit down, and back into the ball game, Festus Andamani. He also has two fouls. So seventh foul already on CSUN, so Davis shooting from here on in, not a good sign for the Matadors because nope. Davis is a very good free throw shooting team, and he makes them both 27 to 8. The lead is 19 for the Aggies. Well, now I'm thinking maybe the Matadors can just hope to get this down to maybe 11 before half. I don't know that they can get it under double digits with the good defense that's being played by the Aggies. I think at this point you just got to play each possession, Allen, and a foul. Trying to get the dribble out was Anderson, fouled by Caleb Fuller. So the fourth team foul on the Aggies, the first on Fuller with 7.32 to play in the first half. Matadors have Starks out there with Anderson, Herrick, Merck, Veladze, and Andemania. Here's Starks working against Ba. To his right, here's the three. Yes. Well, I think that was a two. It was a nice shot. I think they call it a two. But he was able to get his rhythm on his dribble. Ba did a good job contesting it. 27-10, the Aggies over the Matadors, Davis basketball. Magnon on the floor, into the paint, kicks to Kohler. Left wing Ba, that's his spot. Yes. Yeah, because of the motion, because of the penetration, they're able to spread the floor and get good looks. Davis with the bucket. They're now three of six from beyond the arc, 12 of 21 overall, and the Matadors miss yet again. Yeah, that ball for Herrick went all the way down in the cylinder and popped out. Matadors can't catch a break right now. Ba. NBA three, gonna be short front rim, and somehow gets out of Kohler's hands. Amon Anderson ahead to Herrick. Herrick with the step through, gets it back for Merck Veladze. Here's the three in transition off the front rim, no. Yeah, the Matadors just can't buy a bucket. I mean, that's the type of shot that Merck Veladze can really hit, and so right now, we've seen this before, because all we saw it against Santa Barbara, where everything is going right for the your opponent, and nothing's going right for the Matadors. Yeah, left of center, Kohler for Davis, whips it to the right side for Magnon. Fuller trying to post up on Demania. Fuller bulls to his left, short off the left side of the rim. Defensive rebound, bought down by Merck Veladze for CSUN. Matador is down 20. Here's the pass underneath, and Festus, how about a little finesse there for the big fella? That was nice finesse that time, and is Coach Les calling timeout because the Matador scored an easy bucket? Look at the intensity on the staff. They're up 18. He called timeout because the Matadors finally got a layup. You know, you brought up UC Santa Barbara, the 105-58 game here at the Matadome a couple weeks ago. It reminds me of year seven of the West Wing. Did you ever watch the West Wing, the uh, television th show? Th just a little bit. Okay, so in the West Wing, in season seven, it's a presidential election. Alan Alda is running as the Republican Arnold Vinnick against Jimmy Smith, who's the Democrat, Matt Santos. And uh, Bradley Whitford, who's brilliant as Josh Lyman in the West Wing, is the manager, campaign manager for Santos. And he's the kind of the Democratic underdog, and Vinnick has a big lead, and he tells his candidate, he goes, hey, Matt, sorry, Arnold Vinnick's going to have some good days, and to which he responds, he's having too many good days. And I think that's how the Matadors feel, is you can have an off day every once in a while, but when it happens regularly, that's when you got to look inside, you got to look within, and just come out and do what you can do, that, as Ron Artest checks back exactly in. That's exactly right, but because the Matadors have had so many lineups, because they've had so many injuries, True. they have not been able to really get a rhythm with a particular, they had another different starting lineup today against a team that's hot. So the Matadors are going to get it together, but right now uh, Davis is not allowing them to do anything. So Magnon getting a breather as Pekka checks back in for Davis. Here's Pepper in the left corner. Pepper kicks it back out to Fuller, left wing three. Yes. Yeah, everything, look, penetrate and kick. And now they're hitting their shots. So they didn't shoot well from behind the arc yesterday, making only three three-pointers. Today, they are making their shots, and the Matadors are down 21. Yeah, they already have four threes. They're four of eight from beyond the arc, and the Matadors trail by 21. Right side, Starks. High post, left side on Demania. Spins to the bucket. Festus strong to the bucket, can't finish, and Kohler whistled on the foul. So free throws coming up for Festus. You know, if you're the Matadors and if you're the Matador coaching staff, what you're looking at is saying, look, we, uh, we didn't expect to be down this big. We didn't expect this to happen. We knew that it would be a different ball game. But now that we are, we might as well get a chance to take a look at some different players and see how they mesh together. Um, it's going to be very, very difficult to come back from a 21-point deficit. Hey, listen, no, 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 no. Uh, come on. There's, you got to play to the end of the, If you're down 20 at the half, I get it. But right now, you just got to put the pedal to the metal, put it, put a 9 nothing run on, and try to get this game down to about 10 points. I, I, if they have a 9 nothing run, then, uh, then I'd be 
pretty shocked because right now they're struggling uh, making free throws and making layups. I'm, I'm, it's just that the Matadors right now, you can tell the game started at 2. Maybe they thought it started at 4. And a palm by Pekka. Nice job by Anderson in the backcourt. 33-13, Davis up by 20. And Matadors trying to get back into this one. An early run. They didn't score their first bucket to nearly five minutes into this one. Did the Matadors. Here's Starks. Starks, Anderson on the floor with Herrick, Undemania, and Artest. Ronnie with a dribble to the right wing for Herrick. Right baseline, Undemania. Fest is feeling it. Fakes the jumper to the basket. Reverse layup. Denied at the left side. The ball squirts away from an egg way. Here's Anderson. He's denied at the rim. The ball tipping around there on the baseline. They're going to say stays with CSUN. Wow, Anderson looked like he really got some contact on that layup attempt. Uh, it must have been a clean block. Matadors down 20. They only have 13 points with 4 minutes and 51 seconds left and a half. Stark step back. Short. Rebound runs down to Cameron Ba for UC Davis. You're not going to be able to get back in the ball game like that. You still have to run your offense. That's a very, very tough shot. Yeah. Just run your offense and get stops. Ba pulls up from 17. That's too strong. Look at Pepper fly in there. The ball caroms off of Artest and picked up by Fuller in the backcourt. Look at all the hustle. And here's Ronnie. Picks him clean. Artest to the basket. But he can't finish. Oh, my. Wow. Defensive rebound to UC Davis. The Matadors, man, one of those nights. Eh? Of Maybe those, you're right. One of those afternoons. Maybe Ronnie, you're right. Ron Artest does a wonderful job. He did great and uh, and then was not even able to get a flush out of it. Three straight layups. The Matadors have not been able to finish on the back end. Ten to shoot for Davis. Here's Pekka. Ladles it out. Left wing three from Fuller. That caroms off the back iron, but right to Ba. Ba at the top of the circle swings to Pepper. Pepper sweeps into the lane, drops it off for an eggway underneath. One dribble, Pekka wide open for three in the left corner. That's an air ball right into Pepper's hands. He resets it again for Fuller. Now, they didn't hit the rim, so the shot clock won't reset. Here's Ba for three front rim. That did hit the rim, and Pekka takes the offensive rebound away for Anderson, flings it up, hits the floor hard. Undemania finally clears it for CSUN. Here's Starks all the way down, and that's what TJ needs to do. I tell you what, the officials are letting the play. <laughs> They're letting the play because there was some, a few fouls, I thought, uh, that the Matadors put on the uh, Aggies. 33-15, Matadors down by 18. Perhaps some physical play can get them back in it. Here's Ba to Pepper. Pepper trying to line up the three. Anegwe instead backing down on Demania. Spins under. Wow, nice reverse layup. Yeah, that's just a right. nice shot. Matadors can't get consecutive stops. They need to get at least two consecutive stops to even have a chance to cut into this deficit. Here starts in front. Swings to the right wing. Back to TJ. TJ underneath trying for the reverse layup. Loses it on the way up. Festus got a hand on it, but Pepper clears it for Davis. Yeah, TJ is trying too hard, but I don't blame him. He knows the Matadors need to score, and he's trying very hard to get the Matadors to score. And this is where, you know, for Davis, you're up 20. You're just kind of nursing a lead. You're really playing free and easy. Pekka down underneath, trying to draw the charge as Festus. He'll be called on the block, and there'll be a break in the action. I believe that's the third foul on Andemania. UC Davis 35, CSUN 15. 219 to play in the first half. Back with more Matadors basketball on the CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. At Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital, patients recently participated in their own summer rehab games. Every two years, the Center for Rehabilitation Medicine holds an event for patients who are recovering from brain and spinal cord injuries. The games are designed to help patients achieve treatment goals, including balance, coordination, endurance, and social interaction. Patients heal and conquer goals in many ways. This event is just another way the center connects with patients on a human level. Share your acts of human kindness on social media using hashtag HelloHumanKindness. CSUN Matadors Athletics would like to thank Dr. Dominic Sisto and the LA Orthopedic Institute for their continued support. The LA Orthopedic Institute is one of California's most respected sports medicine practices with a philosophy rooted in faster rehabilitation and recovery. The LA Orthopedic Institute has offices in Sherman Oaks and Palmdale. For more information, go to laortho.org. Five 
15. Matadors down big with 2.19 to play in the first half, AZ. Fewest points the Matadors have scored in a half this year is 25. Uh, they're going to have okay. to put a run on to beat that here in the first half. No, uh, they're not getting there. But, I mean, the, the big difference is the Matadors are being out-rebounded 22 to 12. Being out-rebounded by 10 rebounds in the first half, it's one thing maybe if that happens in a game. But in the first half, it's, it's just really unbelievable. And I think right now the Matadors, and, and I'm saying this with the best intentions, they didn't realize how much it bothered Davis to lose yesterday. Davis didn't like losing. They, they've had their way with the Matadors. Ron Pekka misses the second free throw. He made the first one, and the long rebound tapped out to Stark. Starks down the lane and draws the foul to go into the basket. It was a one-on-one -on -one for Pekka. Again, Pekka pressed into duty because Damian Squire not available this series. The junior out of Montreal by way of the Wadash, Wadash, uh, Wasatch Academy in Utah, a lower leg injury. He's not even on the trip, AZ. Right, I mean, but you know what? Uh, next man up and th today, uh, that's exactly what's going on with the Aggies. They came out on fire, and they have not let up. Hendricks into the ball game for the Matadors. Gets it underneath to Starks, out of bounds. Jim Les signaling that Davis has the basketball. The officials disagree. It'll be Matadors basketball. So Hendricks in the ball game for CSUN, along with Artest, Starks, Darius Brown, and Alex Merkvaladze. Left corner Starks for CSUN. They trail big, 36-15. TJ with a with a ball fake, the ball taken away from him. Right corner, Hendrick sweeping to the basket, drops it off for Merck Veladze. Merck Veladze, left hand, yes, goes down and draws the foul on McGill. So Merck Veladze with the low post bucket, and now he'll go to the free throw line, Allen. Malatech for Merck Veladze. Wow, and I butchered that, but that was for our folks in the, uh, from the country of Georgia. Uh, Look at Alan Zinsmeister learning Georgian. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I had a chance briefly to talk to Alex, and he told me, and I told him I thought maybe he'd have a couple of those. Front rim misses the free throw, does Merck Veladze, and it's 36-17, 19-point lead for Davis. Here's Magnon on the floor with Ba, Shaw, Kohler, and McGill for the Aggies. Here's McGill, dribble handoff to Shaw, Kohler with a quick touch. Look at that movement, Gazal. Look yeah. at that offensive movement. And poked away by Darius Brown out of bounds. It'll stay with the Aggies. You know, if you're running an offense like that with this con constant movement, defensively you're chasing. And then on the offensive end, the Matadors have a lot of movement. At some point, you get tired. So right now, uh, the Aggies are saying, look, uh, we're up big. We're not going to let up. By the eight-minute mark of the second half, we're going to have your will in our pockets. Magnon using the screen to his right. Our test out on him. Magnon trying to get it to Shaw. Shaw was cutting. He zigged when he should have zagged. Ball goes over to CSUN. 89 I, seconds to play in this first half. Matadors down 36-17. I do like that the Matadors now are settling down on the defensive end and doing a better job. Much better job defensively getting down in a stance, making the Aggies run their offense. So here's Darius. Veers to the right side. Posting up is Hendricks. He'll instead get it to Starks. Starks to his right. The three is good. Uh, I think that was another two. He's taking a step in, Gazal. That's what he's doing. You know, we're, we're in this bubble. I keep, yep. you know, it's like the angle is a blind angle yeah. for me. He's, he's out. No, you're right. He's out by the three, but he's taking one little step in on the jumper. 36-19. So a 17-point lead for the Aggies. Right side, Magnon for Davis. McGill with a quick touch. Nice job by Merck Veladze on defense. Shaw spins to his left. Shaw to the bucket, but he blows the layup. The ball tapped around out of bounds. Goes over to CSUN. Wow, Shaw missed a bunny. It was kind of like, well, it wasn't the bunny that Artest missed, but Shaw got all the way to the rim. So I'm sure his dad, if he's watching this game, he's saying, son, that's one you got to finish. You're a Shaw. Yeah, hard afternoon for the NBA or Suns, huh? Yeah, the NBA or Suns right now are, are kind of blowing the layup. Missed layup by Shaw earlier. Missed layup by Ronnie Artest the third. High post left side, Ronnie. Hands it right back to TJ. TJ nearly gives it up, but gets it back on the left wing, working against Ba. This is a two-pointer. Skips on the back iron. Offensive rebound, Merck Veladze. He's dispossessed. Ball on the floor, picked up by Magnon for Davis. Aggies will likely hold for the last shot here, up 17 at the half. 36-19, Davis on top of CSUN. Magnon working against Brown, two of the best point guards in the conference. In fact, for my money, they're the two best. Yeah, they are the two best. To the right, to his right, Magnon, down into the corner. 
on the baseline. The Matadors will get the ball back. So they'll have three seconds to try and get up a shot as Ba turns it over. Yeah, by that time, the young sophomore, as he stepped back to hit the three-pointer, he stepped on the uh, sideline. You know, they lost a lot of scoring with Gonzalez and Mooney leaving. And I've been impressed. You know, Cameron didn't have a great game yesterday, but he's had a pretty good season as Darius launches one from about 25 feet out off to the left of the Matadors, go to the locker room, down 36-19. A lot went wrong for CSUN. They only had seven made field goals in the first half, Allen, but they got 20 minutes left to try and come back in the second half. They do. And I don't know that the Aggies can continue to play with the energy and effort that they showed uh, in the first half. I know they're going to attempt to do it, but I mean, the way they came out against the Matadors and they just jumped out on them so early, uh, the Matadors weren't ready for it. So hopefully what the Matadors could do in the second half is kind of have a little role reversal. You know, Mark Godfrey's going to be very calm. You can tell it how he's going to say, boys, they did it to us in the first half. We're going to do it to them in the second half. 36-19 <laughs> here at the half at the Matadome. Coming up next, Matador's halftime from Northridge Toyota, located at 19550 Nordoff, just across the street from the Northridge Mall. Northridge Toyota, the largest growing dealership in the San Fernando Valley. Northridge Toyota, big enough to count, small enough to care. Proud supporters of, use of uh, CSUN Athletics. We're right back after this. Matador's basketball on the CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. It's game time, Matador fans, and at Northridge Toyota, it's game on. With over 700 new, certified and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs to choose from, they're sure to have one that's just right for you. Come in and see why Northridge Toyota is the fastest growing Toyota dealership in the San Fernando Valley. Northridge Toyota, big enough to count, small enough to care. Located on Nordoff across the street from the Northridge Mall and proud supporters of CSUN Athletics. Go Matadors! It's not just a haircut, it's an authentic experience with True Barbershop. Book your appointment now at TrueBarbershopInc.com. True Barbershop is committed to serving the community and have partnered with the Matadors to unite the valley one haircut at a time. With a team of eight professional and qualified licensed barbers, True Barbershop can service all ages from kids to seniors to retired and military. True Barbershop is located at 9229 Reseda Boulevard in Northridge and is a proud supporter of CSUN Athletics. Round Bell Rock to spice up your afternoon. Matador's halftime presented by Northridge Toyota. We'll start with the stat report brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Located at 9301 Tampa Boulevard in Northridge. You can save time by ordering takeout through their website and go to the to-go favorites menu. The 2020 and 1515 wing combos are still available for a limited time. Call them up, arrange the delivery or arrange the pickup for tomorrow for the Super Bowl. The 2020 or the 1515 wings combo, that's at Buffalo Wild Wings at 9301 Tampa Boulevard in North Ridge. Looking at the numbers, uh, it's ugly on one side, but let's start with Davis. Four points for Christian Inigwe with uh, two rebounds for him. Uh, Kennedy Kohler, four points, four rebounds, three assists in 11 minutes. He's been very, very effective. Ezra Magnon, just one of five from the floor with three points, but he's been orchestrating the offense and then defensively all the Aggies causing problems for CSUN. Yes, he has been. I mean, he's just been able to break the Matadors down, get in the key, and then kick it out to open shooters or pass it out, basically getting in the hockey assist where then the, the second pass is a, an assist. Leading scorer for uh, Davis is uh, uh, Cameron Ba. Ba in 17 minutes, nine points, three of six from beyond the arc. He's also got six rebounds and an assist. And after yesterday, he didn't have a great game. Cameron Ba came into play this weekend, averaging about six points a game and shooting 32%. He'd really stepped up for Davis with regard to the amount of minutes he was playing. He was playing nearly 26 minutes a game. Um, and with the absence, obviously, of Stefan Gonzalez and Joe Mooney, they needed guys to step up, and Cameron Ba has stepped up. He stepped up big today, leading scorer in the first half. You know, I wonder if his teammate, Damian Squire, called him and told him, say, look, don't you worry. You didn't shoot well yesterday, but you're going to do well today because he has come out with the kind of confidence that uh, you know you'd have from uh, Squire. Elijah Pepper, six uh, points and five rebounds in the first half. But he's one of those guys, you know, he's a basketball legacy. Dad played college basketball at Central Washington, then later had a career in Australia. In fact, Elijah born in Australia, didn't move back to the States until he was two years old. And he's just one of those guys. You know, we've had him here, you know, Josh Green, Aaron Parks, just one of those guys who no matter what his numbers are, 
He's always competing and pushing to make his team better. And I, I've been impressed with him. He had two big games against the Matadors last year. I just love how he plays, Alan. Look, he always plays the right way, Gazal. He was 4 of 10 yesterday, and uh, it, 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 that's not terrible, but he can shoot better. Look at it. He's 3 for 3, 5 rebounds, an assist, a steal. And if you were uh, in a bar fight, I think a guy from Australia could probably hold his own. He's just a tough guy. Well, he's from the Pacific Northwest. He moved from Australia when he was two. Well, his, I his mean, dad's folks from Australia. His, no, his dad's from Central Washington, but he played pro in Australia. Oh, okay. That's okay. what Well, the Australia part's got to kick in at some point, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Caleb Fuller, seven points. He had 30 yesterday. Seven points, four rebounds, two assists in his 13 minutes. Uh, B.J. Shaw with two points and a rebound. He missed that late bunny. Uh, Ron Pekka, just seven minutes. You know, I'll tell you what, Ron Pekka doesn't have great numbers, but when you don't have Damian Squire and he's thrust into duty, he's been solid in terms of running the offense and been pretty good defensively as well. And he's no Damian Squire, but he's not embarrassing himself out there. But what he's done is he's forced the Matadors to chase him. On the offensive end, he's running the offense the yeah, right way. Yeah, talk about, you know, Mark Godfrey always talks about cut hard. Yes. That kid cuts hard. He cuts hard. The Matadors have to chase he might be able to uh, give a little brush screen to open up somebody. So all the little things, that's what the uh, Aggies are doing this first half. Yeah, just one point, but I, I tell you, if you watch the film, Ron Pekka, a very effective seven minutes for UC Davis in the first half, and then Kalen McGill with four four minutes did not score in the first half. Uh, one of the front court reserves getting Kennedy Kohler and Caleb Fuller some rest when he gets in the ball game. Overall, the Aggies 14 to 31, 45 percent from the floor, four of 11 from beyond the arc. Remember last year, they, last night, they only hit three the whole game, and then four of six from the free throw line. Well, that's a sigh of relief. We won't have 63 free throws again today, AZ. Yeah, <laughs> no, thank you. I mean, look, uh, the Matadors might wish that they could get to the free throw line, uh, but as I, as you read these first half stats, it, the thing that's crazy, Gazal, it was really only about the first three or four minutes of the game that the Matadors looked like they weren't ready to play. After the 16, under 16 minute timeout, the Matadors are ready to play. The Matadors are actually physically, emotionally in it. It's just that they weren't able to do anything to slow down this Aggie squad. 23 rebounds for the Aggies, eight assists against eight turnovers, four steals and two blocked shots for UC Davis. Moving over to the CSUN side. After a big game yesterday, Festus Andamania, three points, two rebounds in his 11 minutes, but he got into a little bit of foul trouble. He picked up his third foul, about five minutes to go in that first half. Ron Artest gets another start, 11 minutes for him, just one point from the free throw line, one rebound. I'll tell you what, and we talk about Ronnie, you know, because first of all, he's a super nice kid. You know, you, you, know, you never have an issue with him, always very polite, and then he's super talented, but we forget a couple of things. We forget he's only played 30 college games, and then in each of the, the, so his first year, he couldn't even join the team till Christmas. Then last year, he had, remember he just, December, he just starts to play well, and then he blows his shoulder out and is done for the season. And this year, to be fair to Ron, he hasn't gotten the chance to really, you know, he played well in that first game. I think he had six points and ten rebounds, and then he turns his ankle, and then he can't, he can't you, you know, the high ankle sprain is a very tricky thing, and he's finally healthy. And then obviously now he's, you know, in terms of playing time, 12 minutes here, 15 minutes there. you got to make the most of it if you're a player. And, I, you know, and listen, I, maybe I'm wrong. I just see great potential in Ron, and I think by the end of the season he's going to have a huge role on this team, Alan. No, you're seeing right. I mean, yes, and all those factors that you brought up do matter. But believe me, uh, Ron Artest III doesn't care about that. When he's on the floor, he's thinking, I've got a job to do. I've got to defend. I've got to rebound. And uh, when I'm around the basket, i got to score. But it has been difficult for him. But – the good thing is all is there are more games left, hopefully, and uh, Ronnie is in the starting lineup, which means that he's going to always have an opportunity to gain the minutes by doing all the right things. But uh, sometimes if you have a breakaway layup after you make a wonderful steal yeah. and it slips out of your hands, yeah. and that might be the kind of rust that you're talking about, the excitement of saying, okay, I've, I've got a layup or a dunk, and it goes right out of your hands. Uh, six points, two rebounds for T.J. Starks in his 17 minutes. He has uh, in the first half leads the Matadors in scoring. Darius Brown scoreless in the first half. Two assists, two turnovers, two steals, and a rebound. Matador is always better when he's getting his players involved. And listen, he hasn't been able to do that in the first half. The Davis defense has a lot to do with that. Everything to do with it, Gazal. Uh, as I mentioned, if you watch this Davis defense, all eyes, all ten eyes are on the Matadors. All their rear ends are pointing towards the baseline when they're on defense. They are mentally and physically engaged on the defensive end, like uh, nothing that we've seen so far in this Matadome. 
Hendricks scoreless in the first half in his seven minutes. Atten Wright played eight minutes, hit a three-point bucket. Alex Merck Veladze, 11 minutes in the first half, four points, three rebounds. He's been pretty effective. I would guess we'll see a lot of him in the second half with both Fidelis and Festus in foul trouble. Well, I think whatever big decides that they're going to rebound is, is going to be the one who's going to get minutes. Because right now the Matadors are just getting pushed around when it comes to defensive and offensive rebounding. So if Alex is going to get some minutes, he, it's not so much the point. Is is he going to grab boards? And so far, he's leading with three. Seven minutes for Fidel Sakarake, two points, one rebound. Amon Anderson, scoreless in the first half, did grab a couple of rebounds and make a steal. And then Brendan Herrick, six minutes in the first half, missed the only shot he took for CSUN. You know, Brendan actually had a shot that went so far down in the hole and then it, it, it came out. So that's kind of how it's been for the Matadors. Matadors trailing big on the rebounding side, 23-15. Matadors not shooting well for the game, 28% to 45% for the Aggies. So right now, the Matadors, I'm going to, it's not so much how this game ends up with a final score. I'd like to see what the Matadors are going to do to really be engaged for this next 20 minutes. What are they going to play like? How are they going to play? Are they going to share the ball? Are they going to do the right things for this next 20 minutes? Matador is out be being out rebounded 23 to 15. And the one that concerns me most, four assists to seven turnovers. They got to get back to running that offense uh, in the second half. We'll step aside and come back with more on Matador's halftime brought to you by Northridge Toyota. Out of town scoreboard from two barbershop up next. Matador's basketball, CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. What happened to us? We used to gather in proud arenas. Now we're watching March Madness while stuck in work holes. Loser. Jerk. Or shoved in man caves. We've been left alone with a DVR replay while trying not to wake the baby. Enough! Let's make our fancestors proud and follow the tribe the B-dubs so we can fill our beers, crush all the wings, and pound every single game. You want madness? That's March Madness. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! Mid-Valley Dental Care is proud to be the official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. Doctors Casey and Terrence Lau have been listening, caring, and explaining for over 44 years. Just blocks from the CSUN campus at 8815 Reseda Boulevard, Mid-Valley Dental Care specializes in athlete's dental care, as well as cosmetic orthodontia oral surgery and dental implants. Make your appointment today at midvalleydentalcare.com, official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. Zal and Allen back with you. Matador's halftime presented by Northridge Toyota. Time now for the out-of-town scoreboard from True Barbershop. True Barbershop located at 9229 Reseda Boulevard and at truebarbershopinc.com. They're still accepting appointments. You have to go through the website to schedule one. I was actually walking by there today, and they were given haircuts earlier this morning, this afternoon. It's owned by two Matador alumni, Daniel and David. They're both proud supporters of CSUN Athletics. Our game is the only one going right now, the one with Davis leading 36-19. to Later tonight, 7 o'clock tip at the Bren. Uh, CSU Bakersfield against UC Irvine. That's an ESPNU game. And then on the island, Cal Poly against Hawaii. The Bows took that one yesterday. And then Irvine took care of Bakersfield yesterday, 70-53. to The Eaters just look very, very good right now. Uh, UC Riverside was supposed to be at Fullerton and Long Beach State was supposed to be at Santa Barbara. Those series both postponed due to COVID protocol. And then another one that was canceled, Sacramento State and UC San Diego. Our score here at the half, 36-19. UC Davis over CSUN. Let's see if the Matadors can muster some resistance here on the second half. Alan and I will be back to bring that to you momentarily. Matadors basketball on the CSUN Sports Network presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. At Dignity Health Northridge Hospital, patients recently participated in their own summer rehab games. Every two years, the Center for Rehabilitation Medicine holds an event for patients who are recovering from brain and spinal cord injuries. The games are designed to help patients achieve treatment goals, including balance, coordination, endurance, and social interaction. Patients heal and conquer goals in many ways. This event is just another way the center connects with patients on a human level. Share your acts of human kindness on social media using hashtag HelloHumanKindness. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where I come to get great deals on my favorite cars. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where I get impeccable service with a smile. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where I go to feel at home. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where they have 64 service bays to fix any problem. 
Northridge Toyota, your neighborhood Toyota dealership. Northridge Toyota is located at 19550 Nordoff and is a proud supporter of CSUN Athletics. Thirty-six nineteen, second half about ready to get underway. I'm Gazal, he's Allen. AZ, you're the conscience of, of this entire program. <laughs> what what do you tell them? If you were in the locker room, what would you tell these guys coming into the second half? Well, you tell them, look, you, you started slow, but you can't start slow in the second half. You're down 17, but we got 20 minutes, so we got plenty of time to get back in it. We talked about it in the keys to the game. Play hard, play smart, play together. Uh, that hard part didn't uh, apply in the first half but if they can start playing hard uh, I actually thought that uh, they took a couple of bad shots but that happens when you get down and you feel like you have to get a bucket I, I watched them in warm-ups and they didn't make many shots as far as warm-ups go but they all seem very focused I didn't see any smiles as if oh th this game is over they seem to have a body language of let's get after it starting well that uh, was a quick change well, a last minute change Matadors send out Brown, Starks, Artest, Merck uh, Veladze along with Hendricks. Looked like Festus was going to walk out there. Then they put Merck Veladze out at the last minute. Davis basketball. Nice pass along the baseline from Kohler to an eggway for the bucket for UC Davis. That's the exact play that they started the game with, and they still were able to score out of it. So just a play that the Matadors aren't ready for. 38-19. Here's Brown on the baseline. Merck Veladze straightaway three, and he starts it off with a bucket. Yeah, of it. Well, whatever it is. Great I'm shot. I'm just going to say sweet Georgia stroke. Sweet Georgia stroke. 38-22 is Merck Veladze with the tray for the Matadors. Here's Pepper on the flash. Left side was Magnon. Running on that left side, they must see something there. An Anegwe, middle post, dispossessed by Brown. Darius takes it away. Terminates his dribble, nearly traveled there. Nice jump stop by DB2. Starks, 18-footer. Yes. Yeah, he got in rhythm. Because it was transition, he was trailing, and uh, Brown smartly just fed it back to him. Matadors with a bucket, make it 38-24. We're under 19 minutes to play in regulation. Here's Ba, who had nine in the first half. He was the leading scorer for Davis. Finds Magnon, wide open left wing three for Kohler, and that's money. Yeah, dribble penetration, drive and kick, and now the three-pointers are falling. 41-24, Davis up 17. Look at Starks. Oh, he can't finish on the reverse. A lot of contact down there underneath. Magnon wheeling on the left side in the corner, working against Starks and TJ. A little bit of a foul there. Uh, you know, I've always kind of wanted these two to go against each other because they're so good handling the rock, and... That time, uh, uh, Ezra just said, hey, I know you're really good, Mr. Starks, but let me show you what I got. And that was a nice move and create a foul. First foul on TJ, first foul on the Matadors here in the second half. Now the whistles came early and often, and then they kind of swallowed them as Kohler trying to get some space, clear some space, but misses the hook shot. Defensive rebound, Merck Veladze. And I think you're right. I think Alex's aggressiveness on the boards is what got him the start in the second half, Allen. Yeah, and then he knocks down a three, and that doesn't hurt. Hendricks to his left. Artest, the 15-footer. Circles the back heel, and a foul on the floor. Tangled up were Hendricks and Pepper. I like that shot by Artest. I, you know, I'm a stickler for, for, for the release point, but his form is so perfect. And that shot looked like it was going to go. So I would just say if he just was able to Hit, take that shot when he's going up as opposed to just as he's starting to slightly go down. It would just creep over the front of that rim. Foul was on Elijah Pepper. That's his second and the first on the Aggies. Right corner, Brown with the up fake. Into the paint, left corner, Hendricks, wide open three. Yes. You know, Hendricks was open the last time that Starks took a reverse layup. I thought he was going to pass it to him because the baseline three, he likes that shot. Magnon tussling with Brown, deflected by Hendricks out of bounds, stays with the Aggies. I like the fact that the Matadors right now on the defensive end, you can tell that they're locked in. They're really trying, but the offensive uh, flow that the Aggies have is also very difficult. They are really doing a good job running their offense, setting good screens, making it difficult to guard. Magnon for Davis. 
Right baseline, Anegwe to his left against Merck Veladze, and Merck Veladze strips it away. Matador's off to the break. This is Starks in the lane. Starks strong to the basket, can't finish. Pepper races back the other way for Davis, ahead for Magnon, throws it a little bit behind him. Ezra gets the ball into the corner. Gonna be Pepper money. for three. That's going to yes. be money. He was wide open that time. I told you, that's going to be money. He wasn't going to miss that. Stark strong into the paint. And an offensive foul as Magnon. I thought Magnon that, was kind of sideways. He was side. That's a bad call. You know, I don't usually say bad calls for the official, but that one was. His head and shoulders were definitely past Magnon. Magnon was running backwards. He did not get in good guarding position. That's just a mistake. That's a bad call. Aggies 44-27, a 17-point lead over the Matadors, nearing 17 minutes remaining in regulation. Substitution, Caleb Fuller comes in. Fuller, the 6'5 junior from England, checks in. He had 30 points last night for the Aggies. Pepper, bounce pass to Ba. Ba left corner to Magnon. Kohler in front. Right wing three. Pepper will shoot it, and yep. Pepper hits it. Yeah, he didn't make one yesterday. Now he's hit two in a row. So they're going to be in trouble because Pepper is hot. You knew you couldn't keep him down. He's just shooting the ball so well, and he's just an excellent player. 47-27. Aggies by 20. Matador has had a little bit of a run to start, but they couldn't sustain it. Davis just came right back. Here's Merck Veladze feeling it to the bucket. He won't finish, but he'll get two shots. Well, Alex is trying to let the coaching staff know that I want to get some minutes. And so let's watch and see how aggressive he is once he's in the low post, how aggressive he is when it comes to defensive rebounding, and how smart he is on who to give the pass to when he's setting screens or receiving the ball. Now remember, his, his guy, Aaron Murphy's on the Davis squad on the bench there. He's a redshirt freshman. They played high school ball together, so I know, and he misses the free throw short off the front rim. You know he wants to look good in front of his guy. They played in a CIF final together. They lost to Sheldon High. You know who Sheldon High had on that team? They had Marcus Bagley. Remember Josh Morgan wow. from Long Beach, who's now yes. at USC? It's a pretty talented Sheldon team in that Sacramento area, and he misses them both. That one's off to the right side. Yeah, that hurts the Matadors. You've got to make the free ones. Even when you're down 20, you think, oh, maybe it doesn't matter, but it does. Every yeah. little point counts. Davis basketball with a 20-point lead and a whistle underneath. And they're going to call a double foul, it looks like. A double foul on... Is that Kohler and Hendricks? And Hendricks is telling the official to watch the elbows that's being thrown. You know, uh, our good friend Eric Bankston sent me a text after I mentioned that I think some of the screens that are being set might be questionable. And he said, are you kidding me? Those are the perfect screens that have ever been set. <laughs> Once again, I'd like to say some of those screens may be a little bit suspect. 47-27. And can, can we, you know, unfortunately, Eric, who's the SID for Dave, is not available to be here today, but we always love when he comes or when we go up there. He always treats us real well and one of the best guys in the league. Yeah, he treats us well because they tend to win. Fuller, Fuller misfires from the top of the circle. Okereke with a defensive rebound. Hendricks accelerating down the lane. Stopped on the baseline, leaves for Merck Veladze. Matador is down 20. Alex to the bucket. Alex lays it up and in. That nice move. So Alex, maybe it is because he's got a teammate on the bench. He's saying, you know that I was the best player on our team. And I'll show you right now, I'm pretty good for CSUN. Magnon accelerates past Darius Brown and a whistle on DB2. Now, you see what how they call that foul on Darius. Darius was on the side of Magnon. That's the exact same way that Ezra Magnon was on TJ Stark. It's just that TJ Stark was stronger and, and he fell down. So that's the kind of foul that the officials must be consistent with. 47-29, Aggies up big on the Matadors, 15-39 to play in regulation. Back with more Matadors basketball on the CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. At Dignity Health Northridge Hospital, patients recently participated in their own summer rehab games. Every two years, the Center for Rehabilitation Medicine holds an event for patients who are recovering from brain and spinal cord injuries. The games are designed to help patients achieve treatment goals, including balance, coordination, endurance, and social interaction. Patients heal and conquer goals in many ways. This event is just another way the Center connects with patients on a human level. Share your acts of human kindness on social media using hashtag HelloHumanKindness. Mid-Valley Dental Care is proud to be the official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. 
Doctors Casey and Terrence Lau have been listening, caring, and explaining for over 44 years. Just blocks from the CSUN campus at 8815 Reseda Boulevard, Mid Valley Dental Care specializes in athlete's dental care as well as cosmetic orthodontia oral surgery and dental implants. Make your appointment today at midvalleydentalcare.com, official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. Manion, Pepper, Shaw, Anegwe, and Fuller on the floor for UC Davis. It's Brown, Starks, Hendricks, Okereke, Merck, Faladze for CSUN underway here in the second half. 47-29 on a turnover. Matadors induce a wild pass, and they'll get the basketball. Well, that time a big had the ball out top and, and threw it away. Uh, that wasn't in the hands of Ezra Manion, that's for sure. CSUN down 18, terminating his dribble is Brown. Left side, Okereke hands it off to Darius. Left wing three for DB2. Pasadena, where you at? Knocking down a desperately needed three in the Matadome. First bucket of the game for Darius. Left side, Pepper working against Starks. Here's Fuller in front. Right side, Magnon attacking the baseline. Looking for Pepper on the back cut, but they get it to Shaw instead. Ten to shoot for Davis. Stolen by Darius. Brown like a thief of the night. Puts it up and is fouled going to the basket. They want a goaltend as well. It should be a goaltend because the ball hit the backboard and they slapped it off the backboard. It should count. It actually did. It hit the backboard and then got slapped off the backboard. So the foul's going to be on Magnon. They're going to give him two shots. Mark Gottfried emphatic that he wants, a, he wants the uh, and one. Coach Gottfried is correct. The ball was, Darius got it off the glass, and then it was slapped off the backboard. So the coach is correct, but the officials, just that time, they just weren't in good position to see it. Yeah, and then, remember, this crew hasn't been here a whole lot. And that's, I think, a lot of what uh, attributed to the 63 free throws yesterday is Darius to the free throw line for the Matadors. And the first one, he yells no, and it rolls in, hits the front iron strong, and then bounces off the back heel and rolls down. As Magnon leaves the game for Davis, Cameron Bobak for the Aggies, the redshirt sophomore from St. Joseph of Notre Dame. And the second free throw goes through Swish. So the Matadors now cut the lead to 13. With Magnon off the floor, they may try to put in some extra pressure on UC Davis. I would here. think so. That might They may be able to create some turnovers if they don't have their best ball handler on the floor. Yeah, normally Pekka's out there, but I don't see Pekka on the floor because Magnon went out and Bach came in and a whistle, and they're going to call a foul on Darius. He got tangled up with Fuller. Uh, I think Fuller, look, Fuller's a big man, and they called a foul on Darius Brown. I thought maybe they could say that uh, play on. I wouldn't say that he flopped, but I didn't think that it merited a foul. Just play on, Mr. Official. 47-34, Matador is down 13. This is Pepper on the baseline. Pepper was looking to take a shot, but instead it'll go to Ba. Shaw lobs inside for Fuller. Nice position by Okereke. Can they secure the loose ball? And finally tapped out to DB2. Whips it ahead for Starks. Starks starts in the transition three. He's strong into the lane. The ball caroms out back to him. Strong move to the bucket. He can't finish. He wanted the foul. Wow. It was. Well, I guess these officials are saying body contact does not count, but they called a charge on Starks, and that was a foul. So just play through it. You got to play through it. 47 34. Davis on top. Shaw drops it off to Fuller, and Fuller. <laughs> now you don't get the foul on Starks, and you get the touch foul there. Poor Vontae Hendricks. I I'll say, Gazal, we've not really seen this crew before. They haven't seen us. I haven't seen, I mean, I'm talking about the eight years I've been working with you. I don't recall ever seeing either official. We saw Matt Rakeson earlier this year. I've never seen either of these two guys, Fulton or Staffan. Yeah, I I, uh, I think before, they're going to have to have, he's going to have to hustle off. That's going to be Hendricks. He was trying to walk around the court, but they've got to start play. So he's got to hustle off the court. And now Stark's giving a hard time to Robert Staffan. He said, you called that on my guy. You wouldn't call it on the other end. 47-34, Davis by 13, and now another whistle. That was a foul. No, they, they didn't call it. It was just out of bounds. Well, do you, if you meant the last one that Darius did, I, I would agree. But, look, there's a whole lot of contact going on underneath. Davis basketball. This is Pepper to Shaw. Cameron Baugh. 
Terminates his dribble. A little two-man game on the left side with Fuller. Fuller against Mark Veladze. Fuller to the basket. Yep. Nice move. You can't let him go over his right shoulder. You have to jump there and take that away. He's left-handed. And you know that you've got to just take that away. And now the Matadors get a touch foul on this end as Anegwe called on Okereke. And that's exactly what Darius Brown, the second, is telling Mark Veladze right now. Look, we know which hand, which shoulder he wants to go over when he's in the low post. Make sure you take that away so he has to go over his left shoulder. He's going to have to shoot a right-handed shot. So Anegwe's first foul, the fifth on the Aggies, he goes to the bench. Back into the ball game for Davis is Kennedy Kohler. Right of center, Starks rises up to fake the three, and he loses the handle on the basketball, and the three goes down. Sometimes you can lose a handle and you can get your rhythm back. I, don't, I, I could never do that, but that's what happened. B.J. Shaw passed Brown into the front court for Davis. 49-37, Aggies by a dozen. Starks trying to take it away from Ba. Kohler off to Pepper. Pepper, pick and pop action. Kohler for three. Misfires. Look at the offensive rebound by B.J. Shaw, and he's denied underneath. Is that Okereke? Long pass ahead to right from Starks. Right strong to the bucket, and he knows how to draw the foul. <laughs> he, well, he didn't have to know how to draw the foul. Pepper was going to make sure he didn't have a layup. That's true. Pepper actually made absolutely sure that the youngster was going to have to go to the free throw line. So it's a smart defensive play. Because the Matadors aren't shooting free throws very well, Gazal. So it's a 12-point game with under 13 minutes to play in regulation. And Allen's right. CSUN just 6 of 11 from the free throw line. Remember, they came into the series shooting 75%. They were 67%, 22 of 33 yesterday. And Atten Wright's first free throw goes down. Atten, he just filled up the scoring sheet all through high school. At, well, started at Lakewood High, but his last two years, Atten Wright played at Fairmont Prep in Anaheim. Career over both, you know, both schools. He scored 1,500 points in 65 games, averaging 24 points per game as a scorer in high school. Well, those missed free throws early could come back to haunt the Matadors. 10-point game, third foul on Pepper. So both teams with six fouls now. So the next foul on both teams will put them into one and one. Yeah, they had to get Ezra Magnon back in that ball game too, didn't they, Gazal? Yeah, Jim Les is a good coach. Excellent he's not gonna, coach. He's not going to let him sit for too Excellent long. Excellent coach. Yeah. Magnon on the left side. Little two-man game with Fuller. They reverse to the right side, right corner, Pepper. Kennedy Kohler off to Pepper. They work the same game and denied by Okereke. Look at Fidelis underneath, now Starks. Leaves for Brown, right wing, Merck Veladze in transition. Hey, hey, Maladetech, Maladetech, whatever it is, that's great. Maladetech, Maladetech. Allen Zinsmeister <laughs> speaking Georgian. <laughs> no, I'm not. And Jim Les Don't calls. you dare say that. I'm, I'm speaking something, and I'm quite sure those that are listening know it's not Georgian. <laughs> calls timeout, and a three-pointer from Merck Veladze makes it a seven-point game. 12-19 to play in regulation. We have a ball game ladies and gentlemen. Aggies 49, Matadors 42. Back with more Matadors basketball on the CSUN Sports Network presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where I come to get great deals on my favorite cars. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where I get impeccable service with a smile. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where I go to feel at home. Where is Northridge Toyota? It's where they have 64 service bays to fix any problem. Northridge Toyota, your neighborhood Toyota dealership. Northridge Toyota is located at 19550 Nordoff and is a proud supporter of CSUN Athletics. Hey Matadors, the Sundial is here to keep you connected to all things CSUN. As the student-run campus news outlet, we aim to be the voice of you, the CSUN community. The Sundial publishes fresh content online daily and timeless, community-focused stories in print every Wednesday. Check us out on the web at dailysundial.com or follow us on Twitter at Daily Sundial and on Instagram at The Sundial. play in regulation. Matadors trail 49-42. UC Davis basketball, CSUN AZ on an 8 to nothing run. So, well, I said 9 nothing run. They didn't do it in the first half. They put together an 8 nothing run here on the second half. You know, but you know that the Aggies at some point, they're going to go on a little bit of run. So what the Matadors have to do is they're going to have to continue just to 
run their offense and continue to do as best they can on defense because a good team like the Aggies, they're going to go on a little four to six point run, but there's plenty of time left in the game. Manion on the right side, moves to his left. Fuller working against Okereke. Kohler swings to the right side for Manion. Hand off to Ba for Davis, nine to shoot for the Aggies. This is Kohler. Off to Pepper. Pepper from 15 foot. The run, running one hander bounces off the back iron. The rebound cleared by Starks for CSUN. Now the Aggies have gone cold. Here's Starks into the lane, dispossessed. Turnover for the Matadors. Here's Magnon. Slips down, and they're going to get Darius on a foul. Yeah, that time Darius, he, Magnon is so smart. He had a little contact with Darius, and he went down because he knew the official would have the call. And Starks that time went one on three and made a mistake and turned it over. Now, Starks, you have to live with his aggressiveness. He is going to do that from time to time. You just have to live with it. And we'll get a break here. So we already used the timeout, so we'll keep it right here. How about Fidelis Okereke? You know, you always like to say that Matadors, when they hit an offensive run, it's geared by the defense. How about two big blocks by Okereke? And I think they've found their guy. Now, Fidelis, skill-wise, is a rim protector, but he's only 6'6". So at this level, he's not going to be a rim protector. But I think what the, the, the coaching staff has deduced, you stick him on Fuller, he can cause Caleb Fuller some problems because of his size and because of his physicality. Fuller goes about 6'5", 220. Fidelis is 6'6", 240, and he's able to kind of put some pressure on Caleb Fuller. Exactly. And what Fidelis is doing, Gazal, is at, with each passing game, the game speed, he's slowly catching up to it. Uh, and so that's what's happening. He's finally understanding how to use his body to try to get in position to grab rebounds, or at least to be a better post player. So you'll see some flashes like you're seeing now of his ability to block shots, his ability to, to just really get after it, and his ability to guard on the perimeter. Uh, but what will happen is, uh, with each passing game, the more film that coaches have on this young man, yeah. they'll make adjustments towards him. So it's a learning process. The Matadors are down by seven. It's gonna be a couple of, at least one and one for uh, Magnon, who's likely to make at least the front end of the one and one. But uh, the Matadors are young. The Matadors are playing. Look, you've got Atten Wright, Amon Anderson, Alex Merck Veladze, and uh, Fidelis Okereke on the floor all at the same four, time. Four, 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 four freshmen. freshmen. So you've got babies trying to learn on the fly. Here's Magnon. One and one. We mentioned really good free throw shooter. Coming in, he was at 85%. And the first one rattles in. It'll be an eight-point game. Darius Brown leaves the floor with his fourth foul. And Darius so that is puts, be the, out. puts the Matadors in a tough spot yes. from a strategic standpoint, especially with Magnon on the floor for UC Davis. Second free throw coming for Magnon, and it's good, and it's a nine-point game. I'll tell you who else has impressed me for Davis is Kennedy Kohler. Kohler is really the glue guy for that team. 17 minutes today, Allen. 7.6 rebounds, five assists, and two blocks. Does everything. Reminds me a little bit. Remember when... Uh, when Trey Hale Edmerson was here for CSUN, that's what he reminds me of a little bit. Merck Veladze, the 17-footer, and he's feeling it. Well, he's feeling it. And I'm not going to butcher the Georgian language, but that's a great shot by Mr. Merck Veladze, an important shot. 12 points for Alex. He leads the Matadors in scoring. 51-44, Davis up seven with the ball. Here's Kohler on the baseline. Left side, Cameron Ba for UC Davis. Ba goes right by Stark, splits it up, too strong off the window. Merck Veladze cleaning the glass ahead to TJ. TJ, a little hesitation, move out high, He'll wait for the screen. Matador is down seven with the basketball. Starks to Anderson. Remember, Darius Brown on the bench with four fouls. Starks, and nice hedge by Kohler. Starks lines up the three. In and out, no, hard break. Defensive rebound, Pepper for Davis. Magnon wheeling into the front court. His team up seven. Pepper to Fuller. Here's Okereke on Fuller. Fuller against Okereke. Another block for Fidelis. Right, left side. Pull up. Transition three. Short off the front rim. Offensive rebound at and right. He knew he missed it, so he went. He chased it. Matadors with a second chance opportunity. He's been near the 10-minute mark here in regulation. Nine to shoot for the Matadors. They dump it down to the big fellow Okereke. Six to shoot. Off to Anderson. Anderson, the feathery jumper from the baseline is good. Yeah, that young man hasn't played in a long time. He had an injured hip, and he's coming out right now, playing some good defense, and hit a nice shot. How about the big fella finding Anderson? Magnon to the rim. 
beautiful reverse layup left to right. He knew that the Aggies needed a bucket and he took a freshman to school. 53-46, Matador basketball, and Pepper picks Starks clean. Pepper into the front court against Merck Veladze, wide open three. Misfires, look at Kohler there for the offensive rebound, off to Fuller who can't finish. But the Matadors don't grab a defensive board, that's what happened, they're tired Gazal. Look at Starks, Starks' body is telling you he is dog tired. Davis up seven with a basketball. Left side Magnon against right, pulls up, yes. <laughs> if you could call a timeout, you might have to. The Matadors are really tired. Uh, you know, Starks is pushing it. He's trying so hard on the offensive end. They're going to need him on the defensive end, too. So, Mark Gottfried, heard your pleas. A couple of substitutions are going to about to check in. Okereke short on the hook shot. The ball loose in front. Pepper flying away with it for Davis. The Euro step, and he can't finish, but Fuller cleans it up. They need to call a timeout, Gazal. They had a chance to cut it. They're down right now by 11, and, and they're just tired. They can't get back on defense. Starks on the left side, waiting for help, and finally the timeout comes from Mark Gottfried. 8.35 to play, 57-46. The Aggies, the Matador has had a chance to cut it to five, and then four straight points for Davis, making an 11-point game for UC Davis. But it was the, the, the play of Magnon, Gazal. Look, he's got freshmen guarding him. He understands that he's going to attack now. He's going to, to, to do the things that is necessary to give them back their double digit lead and so when you have a smart player who's so strong with the basketball who can score it and get others involved you're always feeling comfortable if you're the Aggies yeah. even with the runs the Matadors I mean made. and that's and that's all that Jim Les recruits I mean Kohler you know and I just these are just guys I've seen play a lot Kohler Pepper and Magnon I mean the IQ off the charts and I'm imagining the rest of the guys have similar IQs we just haven't seen them play a whole lot of minutes as we have over the years I always use kind of a pun on coach less words uh, name he gets more out of less he really does because all he never really has the tallest or the fastest or the best shooter or the greatest rebounder yeah. on his team but they always are they're picked to finish third in the conference this year for a reason but when he does have the talents, like when he had uh, Hawkins on his team, when he had the talent, they go to the NCAA tournament. This staff understands basketball because their head coach has played it all his life, and he's a fierce competitor, and he relates well to his players. So even when the Matadors were making their run, and they have made a heck of a run, you sense that uh, there was no panic in the staff for the Aggies. 57-46, Matadors down 11, their basketball with 8.35 to play in regulation. Sense of urgency for the Matadors as the, the, the clock is starting to dwindle away for CSUN. Artest checks in for the Matadors along with Festus Andamania. Left side, Monte Hendricks is also into the ball game. Starks in front, high post Artest to his right. The 15-footer short off the front rim, but he gets the offensive rebound. Out to TJ on the right side. Right baseline, way short on the jumper, defensive rebound to Anegwe, who's checked in for Davis. Three jump shots, none of them hitting the, really the top of the rim. He's gonna have to be able to adjust that jumper. Here's Magnon wheeling off to Pepper on the left side. Pepper left of the paint. Pepper attacking the baseline out of bounds, turnover to the Matador. Shockingly that he turned it over. He was trying to find a place either to get a shot up or create a passing lane to get an easy look for a teammate. Right now the Matadors have a team on the floor that I've not ever seen play together. Anderson running the point with Starks. Hendricks, Artest, and Andemania. Starks right corner. Inside the three-point arc against Ba. Under eight minutes to play. Baseline jumper, yes. Nice shot. Made a little space with the head fake. Was able to get some space to let that shot fly. Matador is on a 6-0 run. They've cut the lead back down to nine. Back cut by Ba, and he can't finish at wow. the rim. Artest ahead to Starks. TJ in front, triple team off to Ronnie. Ronnie underneath, up and under, can't finish on the back end. Well, that was a foul. That was a foul. Um, they, they're letting everything go, though, but Ronnie is strong enough. He's got to finish that, but he did get fouled. Magnon for Davis. And an illegal screen. What? Did you see that? Did you hear that? An illegal screen, the first one I think called today. They are so adept at setting screens and sliding as if they're just pick and rolling. They are excellent at it, and this time the officials saw it. 
Davis 57, CSUN 48, back with more Matadors basketball on the CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. Ah, uh, smell that? It's playoff season. You know how you can tell? Because the playoffs are on. East will meet West, Sevens will be bested, and banners will be lifted. So get in your car, your boat, or your train and get to be dumb To celebrate this special time of the year, curl up with some wings, warm up by the TV with your closest savages, and order a frosty beer just like Mom used to pour. Yeah. Merry playoffs, everyone. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! CSUN Athletics would like to thank the Warner Center Marriott for their continued support. The newly re-energized Warner Center Marriott boosts nearly 500 rooms and a newly styled American restaurant. For room rates or reservations, call 818-887-4800. That's the Warner Center Marriott at 818-887-4800, supporting CSUN Matador Athletics. Anegway, his second, the seventh on the Aggies. Matadors basketball. Merck Faladze back in for CSUN. Anderson Starks on the floor with Merck Faladze, Hendricks, and Andemania. Right side, Hendricks hands off to Anderson. Anderson, his first action in about four games. Underneath to Merck Faladze. Alex, here's the step back. The 15 footer is good. That was a beautiful screen set by Hendricks. And Merck Faladze right now is feeling good on the offensive end. And the Matadors desperately need him to make shots, and he is. 57-50, Merck Faladze with the bucket. He now has 14 for CSUN. Left of center, this is Kohler for Davis. Hands it to Magnon. Pepper with a quick touch. Bach, left corner. Reverse to Kohler. Kohler and Bach playing a two-man game on the left side. Seven to shoot for the Aggies. Here's Magnon trying to wrestle into the lane. Left corner, open three for Ba. Skips over the rim, but offensive rebound, Anegwe. He can't finish, he's fouled underneath. Yeah, that's a time when Festus or Alex have to come up with that defensive board. Yeah. And uh, they weren't able to. And Matador's so now free throws. getting hammered on the boards by nine. Davis 35-26, a plus nine. 11 offensive rebounds for UC Davis. So the fourth on Hendricks, and Mark Godfrey has no choice but to send Darius Brown back into the game. And, and they went, wow. <laughs> that, looked, that looked like a straight kind of shot, line drive shot, but it spins around and down <laughs> for Anegwe. You know, Anegwe is, uh, is a good free throw shooter, and I guess that's why he gets all the breaks. <laughs> yeah. Anegwe was 10 of 11 coming in, 11 for 12, now 12 of 13 overall. And he makes them both in the lead back to nine for the Aggies. This is why you don't want to fall behind early, AZ. And this is why all, you don't want to miss free throws early in the game, too. Yeah. Now, this Aggies really, all they have to do is nurse the lead, and they turn it over, and a whistle underneath. Anderson threw the pass. It was intercepted. Fuller, I thought, made a nice play. Well, Fuller, Fuller but Magnon did. called on the foul. Fuller did, Gazal. I think he did make a nice play, but someone was grabbing, I guess, uh, Darius Brown. So now one and one for Darius. And can Darius knock down a couple of free throws? Plenty of time left, 6-11. Matador's down by nine. Matador's defense has gotten better. Their offense has gotten better. But the Aggies have not lost any of their fire. Hey, good job there for Amon Anderson. I mean, he didn't have anything in the scoreboard. He hadn't played since January 17th against Cal State Fullerton because of a hip injury, and he gave the Matadors some big minutes with Darius Brown the second on the bench. Foul on Magnon, his second. The first free throw goes down for DB2. That was a huge free throw. It looked like it was going to be a bit short. So DB2 has to be smart on the defensive end, can't commit his fifth foul, but Coach Gottfried felt like he couldn't wait to the four-minute mark to get Darius in. Brown makes them both. 79% free throw shooter is four for four today. Brown right on the floor with TJ Starks, Festus Andamania, Alex Merck Veladze for CSUN. Magnon high post for Inegua. Ba, baseline Fuller against Erin Veladze, wildly off the window, hands on it, see a hands, and it comes out to TJ Starks. I think Andamania tapped it up. The transition three by TJ. How about that? TJ no, Starks. They're going to say it's a two. Wow. And the Matadors trim the lead to five with under six minutes to play. Oh, I tell you what, that was a nice shot. Remember, the Matadors changed the time of this game to two to accommodate Davis so they could, they could get the bus rolling a little bit early. 
Left of center, here's Fuller. Pepper. Pepper down the lane. Leaving it for Caleb Fuller. Tapped away from Fuller. Bob. Right wing three from Pepper. Yes. <laughs> That's your star. That's your veteran. That's your guy that you go to when you need a big bucket. Elijah, red hot chili pepper. Little blood sugar. Sex magic on that one. 62-54. It's an eight-point game in favor of Davis. Brown back in the game for CSUN. Attacking on the baseline. Got to be careful. Undemania out to Starks. TJ against Ba. Gets him in the air. High post left side Undemania. Back cut at and right. The ball fumbling around on the ground. Right picks it up. Right fighting for it. That should be a foul. I don't think you should be able to just hit someone when they're on the floor and then have it be a jump ball. I didn't see if they called a foul or a jump ball, but uh, they called a jump ball, I guess, because Atten had the ball, and then the defender just dove right on top of him. Held ball, but the Matadors get it, so that turns the possession arrow over to the Aggies. So Does it? Yeah, because the Matadors were oh, taking possession. Oh, I'm sorry. You're saying the, the Matadors, and it'll switches. turn the possession. Right. Uh, Coach... Uh, Brendan Herrick checks in the sophomore from Esperanza. On the floor for Davis, it's Manion, Ba, Pepper, Fuller, and Anigwe. We have five seconds on the shot clock and because there was never a change of possession. So let's see what the Matadors run. Maybe they're going to get a shot for Herrick. They're He's pretty good. They're pretty good out of these plays. Brown waits to touch it. Four to shoot. At and right, top of the circle for three. Way off to the right. Defensive rebound. An igway for Davis. He rushed that just a bit. Manion in the corner working against Herrick. We near four minutes to play in regulation. Fuller off to Ba. Using the screen. Here's Manion to the baseline. Loves that shot. Skips over the rim. Defensive rebound. How about Atten Wright? Whips it ahead to Starks. Starks, nice dribble move into the lane. Into the corner. Herrick for three. Back iron, bounds out, the ball tapped out, run down by Fuller for Davis. The move that Magnon used, missed the shot. Remember, you know who liked that? Remember Terrell Gomez liked that Loved shot under the shot. baseline. I tell you what, Herrick, Herrick had a, and there's a foul on Herrick. Herrick had a great look at a three and missed it. He had two baseline threes so far this evening, not able to hit it, and now the Matadors are going to be uh, down by double digits. So Fuller with the drive in the end, won a 10-point lead. He'll have a chance to make it 11. 64-54, 3.55 to play. Back with more Matadors basketball on the CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. At Dignity Health Northridge Hospital, patients recently participated in their own summer rehab games. Every two years, the Center for Rehabilitation Medicine holds an event for patients who are recovering from brain and spinal cord injuries. The games are designed to help patients achieve treatment goals, including balance, coordination, endurance, and social interaction. Patients heal and conquer goals in many ways. This event is just another way the Center connects with patients on a human level. Share your acts of human kindness on social media using hashtag HelloHumanKindness. CSUN Matadors Athletics would like to thank Dr. Dominic Sisto and the LA Orthopedic Institute for their continued support. The LA Orthopedic Institute is one of California's most respected sports medicine practices with a philosophy rooted in faster rehabilitation and recovery. The LA Orthopedic Institute has offices in Sherman Oaks and Palmdale. For more information, go to laortho.org. the Daniel LaRusso's gonna fight portion of this one. <laughs> 3.55 to play in regulation. Davis 64, CSUN 54. The and one to Caleb Fuller who'll shoot the free throw now. Fuller had 30 yesterday. The bucket gave him double figures with 11. 11 points and five rebounds for Fuller. Four of 12 from the floor. Can't we just put the point on the board and play defense? You know he's gonna make the free throw. I mean, how about we just save a little time and drama? foul on Brendan Herrick who just entered the game. So it's right on the floor with Darius Brown the second. TJ Starks, Brendan Herrick, and Alex Burke Veladze. For Davis, it's Manion Ba, Fuller, Kennedy Kohler is checked back in, the 6'7 senior from Vegas, and my favorite player on the Aggies, Elijah Pepper. You like that name, that's what it is. I told you just to put that free throw on the board, Gazal. So 65-55, 
Matadors trail by 10, under four minutes to play. Right wing, Starks. Right corner, Brown. Little two-man game with TJ. Knocked out of bounds and over to the Aggies. I think what they did is Pepper's three, I think they ruled it a two. Did they? Because they took a point off the board for the Aggies with 340 to play during that timeout. That's, so, the, that's the fifth turnover, I think, on, on uh, Stark. Starks is having a tough time tonight. Or this afternoon, I should well, say. Manion does that to a lot of people. And so does UC Davis. Yeah. Ezra. They're running clock now, Gazal. They're going to run their offense. Right wing from Ba. Spins around and down. <laughs> and he jumped up and down as if to say, finally, you hit some earlier, Mr. Ba. You're a good shooter. Don't worry about that. 68-55, a 13-point lead for Davis. Time dwindling for the Matadors. Need a sense of urgency here. Herrick right back to TJ on the left wing. Starks to his right. Starks rises up. 15-footer, yes. Starks can get that shot when he wants. He can make that shot most times. 11-point game as Manion brings it into the forecourt for Davis. Davis 68, CSUN 57. Davis 2-1 and one in back-to-backs this year. The one loss was last week when they lost in overtime to Santa Barbara. Pepper left wing three. That hits nothing but nylon. Yeah, I mean, right now, the Matadors, they, they've run out of gas, because all the penetration by Manion and uh, the spot-up shooters are making shots. But that's all right. Tonight, you just didn't have it. Stark, step back three, short front side. Pepper with a defensive rebound for Davis. Matadors trying to win back-to-back -back against Davis for the first time since 2010. The first time they beat him in a single season was 0-9. Here's the steal by Darius. Darius with a steal on the bucket. Matadors are going to have to use a little bit more pressure defense. They're not going to be able to just uh, lay back. Uh, I don't know if they have the energy to do it, but that's what they're going to have to try to do. Well, Darius certainly can't with his four fouls. Pepper and Davis just managing the clock here. Under two minutes to play in regulation. 71 for Davis, 59 for CSUN. Nice job by Jim Les and his squad. Angle left on the far side, and Fuller turns and faces against Brown. Little mismatch as he swings it to the right corner. Pepper launches the three. He'll miss it. The tip by Fuller, no, but goes to Kohler, who's fouled by Merck Veladze. You know, that's and that's something Mark Godfrey talked about that in the in the pregame. He said, hey, we've not been good rebounding the ball of late, and defensive rebounding has really been a bit of an Achilles heel for the Matadors. And that's the youth was all because the people they're relying on to get rebounds when they don't have Brookins in the ball game are a freshman and a couple of freshmen and a sophomore. So sometimes they just don't understand angles. They don't understand that you've really got to snap your head around and get a body on a person when the ball goes up. And so that's why they're struggling uh, with the rebounds. And so that's going to get better next year. This year, I don't think it's going to get much better. It's going to be... Uh, a, a, just one of those things that the Matadors are going to struggle with. You know, Kennedy Kohler, he's what I call a basketball handyman. I mean, he can do everything. He, I told you about, we talked about Trey Hill Edmerson. He can score if you need to. He can rebound. He plays a little defense. He's a good facilitator. Front rim. And what's that song by James Taylor? Comma, 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 comma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Kennedy Kohler for you. He makes that's, one of two. That's, look at this. Now they're in a the zone. How smart is this? Right wing three from Hendricks. Off the iron left side, B.J. Shaw with the defensive rebound for Davis. I just love it. Coach Les goes to a zone. He's mixing it up. He's going to switch it up because the Matadors have done pretty good, so he gives them a zone. Now the Matadors have to deal with that. This game has is, is been over, but I just like the fact that to the very last, these coaching staffs keep coaching. So the Matadors will split this series they'll drop to seven and eight davis goes to four and six manion in the lane no the tip up and good by bj shaw well you know right now the matadors you know their, their legs are gone but you've got to do better when it gets a charge oh wow they call a block i'm shocked block on fuller shots coming up for tj starks 74 59 i mean they they had a chance allen it was a seven point game they had a chance to cut to five and then on the back end, they actually got a stop but couldn't clear the defensive rebound. Yep. And then th uh, four straight points made it a nine-point game. And since then, Davis has really just been nursing that nine-point lead. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> extending on that nine-point lead. The Matadors are, um, they, they, they lost this game in the first half. 
fought back valiantly in the second half, but that run took a lot out of them. And so right now, it's just a matter of what the final score is going to be. Uh, but I'm going to say this about uh, the a person that we really like, Brendan Herrick. The Matadors need Brendan. Brendan has to make some shots. They need Brendan, his experience. And uh, for the last couple games, he's not been able to get uh, on track uh, offensively. So uh, they're going to need him. And TJ misses the first free throw. The front end of the one-on-one right into the hands of Atten Wright, though. Atten Wright can't control it and flings it up. And now Atten will go to the free throw line. How about Atten? That's the second time he's gotten an offensive rebound. And he's the shortest guy. Well, no, I guess Ezra is the shortest, shortest guy on the court. But uh, Atten is in there battling. I like that. You know he competes. He is a competitor. He has got uh, a world of confidence. And uh, his future is bright. You know, obviously, we were missing Eric Banks then. You know, he worked at CSUN for many years, and he does a great job running the sports information department up at UC Davis. Always a pleasure. And he always treats us real well. You know, he's part of that Bob Vasquez tree as Atten right to the free throw line for CSUN. Atten's first free throw, nothing but nylon on that one. Right now, three of three from the free throw line today. Fuller leaves the game. Coming into the ball game is an egg way. When you talk about Eric Bankston, I mean, you know, he's uh, he's family to us down here. He was at CSUN for a good while, and he's gone up north, and now he's made that his home, and his lovely wife, Sigmund, and his young son, Jake, uh, Jacob. Uh, but uh, he's nice to us now because he uh, his teams keep winning. You, you, yeah. I, I mean, want to be so hey, so nice. You, you, beat, you beat him a few times. Since I've been here, we have, you know, CSUN yeah. hadn't beaten Davis yeah, all along. Yeah, I'd like to know how nice that guy would be if it was something like 18 out of 21 you know, <laughs> uh, the, for the right, Matadors. Right, or Mon Yon the free throw line. Here, here's be. another guy, AZ. I mean, we're going to get to see him theoretically for the next two years. Oh, Ezra? Yeah. Oh, I'm happy. You know what? I Coach Les is a wonderful coach, but I hope somebody uh, that, that Ezra decides that it's more important to stay here at Davis because Ezra's the kind of player that uh, some of these big conferences, somehow they try to get people to talk to him. I hope that's not the case. I just love to be able to see this young man all the way through his senior year. One if I'm two, around. One of two for Magnon, right wing three from right. Too strong off the back iron. Okereke offensive rebound, muscles it up and in. Well, it'll make the score look a little bit better. Don't foul. Don't foul, young Atten. Do not foul him. Also got to talk to Ryan Oliver, the Dobo, for uh, UC Davis. You know his brother, his big brother Vince. We know him. Yep. Former head coach over at Notre Dame. He's still coaching over at the Yula Institute. And the horn will sound, and that's the final. 75-63, UC Davis splits the series against CSUN. They win the back end of the doubleheader here on Saturday afternoon, and the Matadors fall to 7-8 and eight overall, 3-5 and five in Big West play. The Aggies now 4-6, and 2-4 in Big West play. What do you think, AZ? I think that this is a very uh, uh, balanced Big West uh, uh, season. Uh, I think when you see these two teams go back and forth the way they did and split, that uh, you know you're you're you've got to peek at how good the Big West talent is. Uh, but uh, as far as this game today, just was the the, the Matadors lost it in the first half because uh, the Aggies just came out really really ready to ball. 75-63 the final. We come back. We'll have Matadors post game for you presented by Under Armour the official outfitter of CSUN Athletics. Under Armour, built to make you better. Check GoMatadors.com for the latest in branded CSUN apparel. 75-63 the final. Davis with the win over CSUN. Back with more Matadors basketball on the CSUN Sports Network. Presented to you by Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital Medical Center. It's game time, Matador fans, and at Northridge Toyota, it's game on. With over 700 new, certified and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs to choose from, they're sure to have one that's just right for you. Come in and see why Northridge Toyota is the fastest growing Toyota dealership in the San Fernando Valley. Northridge Toyota, big enough to count, small enough to care. Located on Nordoff across the street from the Northridge Mall and proud supporters of CSUN Athletics. Go Matadors! It's not just a haircut, it's an authentic experience with True Barbershop. Book your appointment now at truebarbershopinc.com. 
True Barbershop is committed to serving the community and have partnered with the Matadors to unite the valley one haircut at a time. With a team of eight professional and qualified licensed barbers, True Barbershop can service all ages from kids to seniors to retired and military. True Barbershop is located at 9229 Reseda Boulevard in Northridge and is a proud supporter of CSUN Athletics. Matador's post game from Under Armour. AZ, you know who wrote Round Ball Rock? No, I do not. Who? John Tesh. You got to be kidding me. I'm not kidding. He's not how kidding. well rounded is Mr. Tesh? Well, I mean, how how much money is he making? Because they're using that again now. Remember, they used it on NBC. Look at you. Back I talk the about 90s. the I talk about his value, his talent, and you're talking about the bucks. What did Randy Moss say? Straight cash, homie. <laughs> Straight <That> cash, homie. <laughs> 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 Buffalo Wild Wings located at 9301 Boulevard. See, we have fun. That's a problem. <laughs> we have too much fun. If we didn't have as much fun, we'd probably call a better game, AZ. Oh, I think we do okay because we're having fun. 9301 Tampa Boulevard in Northridge. You can save time by ordering takeout on their website from their to-go favorites menu. 20-20 uh, and 15-15 wing combos. They're still available for a limited time. I'm guessing a 20-20 or a 15-15 wing combo might not be so bad tomorrow. For the big game. Oh, for it would the, be uh, great. For the Chiefs and Perfect. for the Buccaneers. Perfect for the big game. You know, and I, Go out I, and get it. I grew up in an NFL era where the idea of a Chiefs-Buccaneers Super Bowl was laughable, but I guess everything changes, not always for the better, Alan. And so, uh, <laughs> the, hey, the, you're going you're gonna to have our, our Kansas audience leave us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, kids, you know, I, yeah, uh, uh, but my guy Jay Binkley, he does radio in Kansas City, so he's a, he's a Chiefs guy. You know, I do. I like Andy Reid, and I like Pat Mahomes, so I hope they, they get it done tomorrow. Back-to-back uh, -back Super Bowls for the for the Chiefs. Uh, uh, for UC Davis, though, they won today 75-63. Christian Anegwe, 8.6 rebounds for him in his 22 minutes. My favorite player, one of my favorite players on the Aggies. How about Kennedy Kohler's line? 8 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists in 26 minutes. He was 3 of 6 on the floor. Not quite a uh, Trey Hill Edmerson 9-9-9. But pretty good. I thought he did a great job also on the defensive side. He did. And, look, whenever you see six assists from a big and only one turnover and a steal, and he gets you double-digit rebounds, you probably won the game, and they won it handily because of his excellent, excellent play. You know, I'm not happy that the Matadors lost, obviously, but you feel for the kid because, remember, Kohler was the kid who missed the free throws against Santa Barbara that would have won the game for them. So nice to see him play. Well, and, you know, they, a big part of what Jim Les does is how they space the floor on offense, and he is a big part of that. When you can have, look, you can space the floor, guys can knock down shots. They were cold yesterday and the Matadors won. Today they were hot and the Matadors lost. But it just gives you so many options offensively. Ten points, three assists in 31 minutes for Ezra Magnon. Cameron Baugh had a big game. He bounced back yesterday. He was just one of six. He hit two early, and that got him going. And then he hit a big one late for them. Twelve yep. points for the kid from St. Joseph of Notre Dame. Of course, high school of both Jason Kidd and Ray Young. Um that was in 35 minutes, so a good game for Cameron Ba, and he's coming along. And remember, he's got a couple of sh he's some big shoes to replace in Joe Mooney and Stefan Gonzalez. You know, when he hit that last three pointer, and it was a huge shot, as you mentioned, he jumped up them down because he he felt like it wasn't going to go in. So I love the enthusiasm of these young players. He's he, look, he was shooting under 30 percent prior to this game. But believe me, you can look at his stroke and know he's about a 38 to 40 percent three-point shooter. Yeah, Elijah Red Hot Chili Pepper, the firstborn unicorn, doing a little Californication here down in uh, the San Fernando Valley. 18 points, nine rebounds for him, seven of ten from the floor, including four or five from beyond the arc. You know why I like Elijah Pepper, AZ? There's one reason I like him. You've seen Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Yes, right? I have. He is a closer. That yes. guy is a closer. Hey, hey, it, definitely a closer. And, and look, whenever they needed a big bucket, he was searching to get people involved or he'd take it himself. And like I told you, when that ball went in the corner and I said, you can count this, I knew it because that's just Mr. Pepper. Uh, Caleb Fuller, 14.6 rebounds. It was tougher for him today. They made him take 13 shots to make 14 points. Uh, Fidelis did a good job on him, but he was effective, made all three of his free throws. Four points and five rebounds for B.J. Shaw. Solid 11 minutes off the bench. Uh, Ram Pekka didn't play in the second half. I thought he had big seven minutes in the first half for his one point. And a cameo for Caleb McGill, about three minutes for him, did not score for the Aggies. The da uh, Davis Aggies overall, 27 of 61, 44%. 10 of 22 from beyond the arc, 45%. And they actually fell off from the free throw line, just 11 of 15, 73% after being over 80 yesterday. Oh, mercy. They go, get in that gym uh, on, before you get home. Get
get some shots up at the free throw line. 43 rebounds, 13 assists, 16 turnovers, six steals, and three blocks for the winning Aggies. On the Matador side, uh, Festus Andamania, 14 minutes, three points, and two rebounds for the sophomore. Ron Artest, the third, just one point uh, on the game, two rebounds for him. 0 of 6 from the floor. He had some close in shots. If he'd made a couple of those, could have maybe changed the complexion of the game. Uh, a typical effort from T.J. Starks, 18 points, three rebounds for him. He also had three assists, just 8 of 17 from the floor. So he had to work a little harder to get those points. He was 4 of 13 yesterday. To be fair, surprising that T.J. even played. He was, yes. he was, he was a gamer because yes. he was not 100%, but he still wanted to be on the floor to help his team. Yes, he wanted to be on the floor and help his team. I'm looking at it, five turnovers. That's not like T.J. T.J. is much more solid with the ball. But he was, like I said, he, he was tired. And sometimes, you know, when you get a little fatigued, the mistakes come. But his effort, his desire to help his team win, uh, he's a leader too. So even though the Matadors didn't get the victory, there are some pluses that you could take out of this loss. 28 minutes for Darius Brown and played the game in a little bit of foul trouble. Nine points, one rebound, four assists, and five steals. And he really turned it on in the second half. He was a big part of when the Matadors had that surge to cut the lead back to single digits. Just couldn't quite finish it. Darius has got to take more than three shots in a ball game. Darius has always got to be closer to double-digit shots because he shoots so well. But he uh, had foul trouble. He was a little passive. But he did, once again, four assists, only two turnovers, and five big steals. Darius was up being Darius. Three points in 17 minutes for Vontae Hendricks. Seven points in 18 minutes for Atten Wright, although he was just one of six. Uh, Amon Anderson, we saw him for the first time since Fullerton had a bucket and a couple of rebounds in 13 minutes, did a nice job running the team. You mentioned Brendan Herrick already scoreless in 11 minutes. He missed both his shots. A couple guys I want to talk about. Fidel Sokarake, again, keeps getting better. Four points, five rebounds, two of three from the, from the floor in 17 minutes. And how about four block shots and just did a great job causing problems for Caleb Fuller. I think we're kind of seeing him grow right before our eyes. You always know what to say, Gazal. You always know the stats that my eyes are focused on. Those four block shots were huge. It means that he was really, really engaged defensively. And then the five rebounds, two in the offensive end. And he was two of three from the floor. So, look, he's a freshman learning with every passing game. He's going to get better. But today, uh, when he could have just maybe played bad when the Matadors got down big, he played very, very hard and got some production out of it. And then how about Alex Merck Veladze in his 29 minutes? 16 points and seven rebounds. I think the best game we've seen him play since that opener game against Westmont and the game he had against uh, Pepperdine. And what I liked about it was Alex was confident. He was calling for the ball, and when he got the shot, he made it. He stayed within the paint. You know, if the three was open, he would take it. He wasn't hunting the three. He was trying to find the ball. And then the rebounding, obviously, when he starts to rebound, you know, Coach Godfrey mentioned it in the pregame. He said, you know, we lost two pretty, pretty good rebounders. Between the two of them last year, I think between Lamine and, and Elijah, that's about 17 rebounds yes. a game yes. that they need to make up. And Alex, if Alex can get seven a game, that's a huge plus for the Matadors. It's a huge plus. I think he is more comfortable coming off the bench. 16 points just to see the ball go through the net for him was huge. Uh, I mean, uh, Alex, he's got to do a little better on his free throws. You know me because all the, they're yep. free. I don't understand why you can't make 70% of them. Yeah. He was two for five. But I think that this might give him a little bit of confidence as the Matadors head into uh, uh, the next games. Either maybe they play one next week or a couple of weeks from now. I think he's going to be ready. CSUN, 22 of 55 from the floor, 40%. 7 of 21 from beyond the arc, 33%. And then 12 of 18, 67%. So the second straight game, they shoot 67% from the free throw line. They came into the series at about 75% as a team. Out-rebounded 43-31. The one that bothers you is 15 offensive rebounds to 23 defensive rebounds. So in that, those are the same opportunities. You generally want to be 2-1 to one in that category, and good teams are 3-1 to one in that category. Yes, and so as Coach said, and he's, that's why I really like Coach Godfrey. He never hides anything. He knows they have to get better, but he also knows that he may not have the players to be able to do it the way he would like. The Matadors have youngsters, because all that they're going to have to depend on to grab rebounds, and, and rebounding is a skill. It's a desire, but it's also a skill. You know, the Matadors also, AZ, uh, nine uh, assists to 11 turnovers. And we always talk about how the Matadors are better when they have more assists than the other team. And obviously today that didn't quite work out as uh, Davis had 13 uh, assists to the Matadors Hello. having nine. Mark Godfrey joining us on the post-game show. Coach, uh, appreciate you coming out. Uh, just didn't quite, weren't quite able to finish it off. Thought you guys had a couple of nice runs in the second half, but Davis did a good job and held you guys off after jumping out to that big lead in the first half. 
Well, you got to give those guys credit. They really uh, played well in the first half, and I thought we were really mad. I mean, we just really didn't do anything very well. We started off and strong. And – All right, looks like we lost Coach for a little bit. He just he was saying they started off, they struggled. Maybe he walked into a dead spot. He's still uh, connected with us, and so we'll wait to see if he comes back. Uh, Matadors uh, lose this one, 75-63. We have Mark Godfrey down the line. but Here we go. There we go. All right, guys. All right no problem, no problem, Coach. Uh, you were starting off saying uh, uh, about uh, the, the, the first half things didn't go so well for you guys. Well, yeah, we just got off to such a poor start, and it was both ends of the floor offensively. We got impatient. Uh, it's been a – uh, you know, at times with our team, that's happened a number of times this year, and it's got to it's got to stop. But defensively, I thought we didn't have the the energy that we had yesterday. I thought in the second half, if you you know, you got to give our players a lot of credit. I thought they battled really hard. I think we got it down to seven or five. I think at one point in time, mm-hmm. and, you know, we're knocking on the door there, and then we had a couple turnovers and quick shots. Uh, you know, we didn't have enough poise at that point. That sometimes happens when you have a lot of young guys on the floor, but. Uh, first half, our effort wasn't there, I didn't think. Second half, I thought we had tremendous effort. Uh, we just were too big a hole. And, uh, you know, you can't do that against a, a good basketball team or a well-coached team. Got to give those guys credit. They made some nice shots late in the game, shots they probably didn't make yesterday. But I liked our second half effort. It was much better. Coach, you always talk about getting in a stance on defense, how it's so important to get in a stance. I mean, heck, it seemed like the Aggies, they just came off the the bus in a stance, and their defensive energy really bothered you guys early. Well, I thought it did, and I thought we got impatient. We need to be a little bit better. And uh, and so uh, that was a little bit frustrating. Uh, But, you know, give them credit. Uh, You know, we beat them yesterday, and they were able to come back and play a lot better today. I think they, you know, some of the things that we tried to do, uh, you know, we weren't really able to get those things done, and uh, but I think in the, I think the bottom line was the, the energy level first half to the second half uh, completely different from our our end of the uh, you know for our team, and that's just not acceptable. We have to be able to play that hard for uh, forty minutes. Coach, you mentioned the young guys, and I thought all your young guys really did something. So I want to start with with Fidelis. Uh, you had George Gervin over there. No, I mean Caleb Fuller, who had 30 points yesterday. <laughs> and I thought Fidelis really – he he was he was in Fuller's head. Fuller had some problems dealing with Fidelis down underneath. I thought he did a great job. He did a pretty good job. You know, you think of Fidelis as a freshman. Alex, I thought, made some really nice plays as well. Atten did. Ahmad did. You know, those guys are all young young guys, and sometimes you forget that. But uh, and we had them all in there at different times. But I thought Fidelis – you know, he's given us a great effort, uh, doing a lot of nice things, both ends of the floor. I thought he defended pretty well. He blocked some shots. Um, we've got to be a better team rebounding team. I think sometimes, you know, we're, we're just kind of waiting for one guy to go get it. And uh, that's not fair for a guy like Fidelis or those guys that are rebounding the ball. So we've got to do a better job of helping them on the glass. But defensively, I thought he did a really nice job of today. You, you mentioned Amani Anderson, and we hadn't seen him since Fullerton. And I, I thought I mean, the numbers didn't have big numbers today, but I thought he played admirably because you were asking him to do a lot. Darius went out with foul trouble. He ran the point, and you guys were able to make a run. And I actually thought I, that's the best kind of I'd seen him play defensively uh, probably since early in the season. He did a really nice job. You know, he's battled a, an injury as well here that's kind of kept him out of a couple games, and so he hasn't had a lot of practice time either, but – uh, like you said, I would agree with you. He did a really nice job. He made a big shot over there for us across from our bench there in the second half. But defensively, he was solid. So, you know, again, these young guys, uh, you know, we're throwing them to the wolves right now. They're getting some great experience. And, uh, you know, he stepped up and did a good job. You know, Coach, you were reading my mind about throwing the young guys to the wolves. I mean, at one time you had four freshmen and, and T.J. Starks on the floor. And I'm thinking to myself, boy, oh, boy, this is baptism by fire. But you trust these young guys, don't you? I trust them, and, you know, the thing, too, is the only way they're going to get better is, uh, you know, to play. And, uh, you know, in a year where it's such an unusual year, and, uh, you know, this is a good time for them. Uh, You know, obviously we want to win. We're trying to win. We want to win desperately. But it's a good year for them to get in there and uh, play and learn and be able to make some mistakes and learn from the mistakes and get coached and all those type things. So, um, you know, you take a look at those young guys that are playing right now, those freshmen. I think all four of those guys, uh, they're going to end up being really good players here in, uh, in time. It's just 
you know, you can't speed up the clock sometimes, but Amon, you know, Atten's done some really nice things. You know, Alex had some really nice plays in the Southern League. I think both ends of the floor, too. Made some nice shots and, uh, you know, took the ball strong and played with a little fire. Uh, so, anyway, they're going to get better. They're just, uh, they're just youngins right now. Coach, last thing for me, and you addressed it in the pregame, the defensive rebounding is something that has concerned you and you guys really need to do it. And it's got to be frustrating when you get a stop and you can't finish the possession because the ball's bouncing around. And, you know, a lot of that's not your fault. Sometimes the ball's going to take weird bounces. Um, but I know that's something you probably want to make sure, get somebody in there shorthanded to clear some of those defensive boards. Well, I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's got to be a, a more of a team rebounding. You know, we got guards that are standing there watching. They're, they're expecting somebody else to get the ball. And it's got to be a rebounding by, uh, you know, by our whole team, uh, by committee. And uh, everybody's got to stick their nose in there on the defensive end. And I think we had one possession. They had four or five. Uh, they must have had four or five uh, offensive rebounds on the same possession in the first half. And, you know, that's just not acceptable. And uh, we've got to work on it. We've got to get better at it. And uh, hopefully that won't ever happen again. Uh, before I let you go, Coach, what's the prognosis? So the only teams you can schedule next weekend would be Big West teams. And it looks like everybody's already matched up. So we're looking at probably a true buy next weekend. Is that, is that the case? Well, I think what, the way we got to approach it is we're going to practice this week as if we're going to end up with a game. I think you have to do that now. Uh, Long Beach, Irvine, and uh, UC San Diego were the three games, three teams the six games we missed. So if one of those three were to somehow pop open uh, because their opponent, you know, ends up in a COVID situation where they're, they're still eligible to play, we, we've got a chance then to reschedule it and we can, we can go play. But uh, the Big West has told us it's only league games now and, and on the weekends. And uh, so we'll just wait and see. We're going to hope we get a game. I mean, uh, I know our guys want to play. I think we need to play, but uh you know, it very well may work itself out that we don't have a game. If that's the case, we're going to get some rest over the weekend, and uh, we got three more weekends before the Big West tournament, and we got to get ourselves ready to play. Coach, as always, really appreciate the time. Thanks a lot. All right, guys. Thank you. Mark Godfrey joining us on the post game show. Matadors dropped this one 75 63. We'll step aside for one last time, and then Alan and I will come back and finish it, finish it off for you. 75 63, the final today. You see Davis. Over CSUN. Back with more Matadors basketball on the CSUN Sports Network, presented to you by Dignity Health, Northbridge Hospital Medical Center. What happened to us? We used to gather. What happened to us? We used to gather in proud arenas. Now we're watching March Madness while stuck in work holes. Loser. Jerk. Or shoved in man caves. We've been left alone with a DVR replay while trying not to wake the baby. Enough! Let's make our Fanchesters proud and follow the tribe to B-dubs so we can fill our beers, crush all the wings, and pound every single game. You want madness? That's March Madness. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! Mid-Valley Dental Care is proud to be the official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. Doctors Casey and Terrence Lau have been listening, caring, and explaining for over 44 years. Just blocks from the CSUN campus at 8815 Reseda Boulevard, Mid-Valley Dental Care specializes in athlete's dental care, as well as cosmetic orthodontia oral surgery and dental implants. Make your appointment today at midvalleydentalcare.com, official dental practice of CSUN Athletics. Back in the Matador. Matador's post game presented by Under Armour. Time for the out of town scoreboard, which is presented by True Barber Shop. True Barber Shop located at 9229 Reseda Boulevard and at truebarbershopinc.com. They can still accept appointments through the web. They're owned by Matador's alumni, David and Daniel, proud supporters of CSUN Athletics. You know, one of our big fans, Mike Mollett, he wants to get a haircut, and he lives in northern uh, northern Wisconsin. I think he's going to have the private jet bring him in, and he's going to make an appointment <laughs> at he's going to make an appointment at True Barbershop and have them give him a trim. You I know, mean, I, he was I, he tweeted it, so he must be serious he, about it. You know what? It's funny. You know, Mike is such a wonderful guy. It, he could probably do that. Uh, most people wouldn't be able to think about that. But Mike, if you're going to have that private jet come in. Get something other than a haircut, too. That's all my, that would be my suggestion. He'll come go swimming, <laughs> swimming in the CSUN pool. Exactly. You know. uh, players of the game presented by Under Armour, uh, the official 
athletic outfitter of CSUN Athletics, Under Armour, built to make you better. AC, you you do this. Um, oh, you know what? We didn't give the scores because there's no other games. Uh, let's go to the scoreboard first. Okay. The out-of-town scoreboard, we're the only game, and it's a final 75-63, but uh, 7 o'clock tonight, CSU Bakersfield against UC Irvine. The Eaters uh, had a big win yesterday over the Roadrunners. Matadors head to Bakersfield late in February, and then Cal Poly goes and visits Hawaii. So my guy Chris Sylvester had planned to spend Christmas in Hawaii because they were supposed to open the Big West season in Hawaii. That got canceled, and he was a little bummed out. And now, you know, with two days' notice, he's out in Hawaii calling games. And then, of course, the great Bobby Curran on the call for the University of Hawaii. That game tonight, 9 o'clock local time. Uh, San Diego was supposed to play Sac State. Fullerton was supposed to host Riverside. Santa Barbara is supposed to host The Beach. All those games by the wayside because of COVID protocols. Yeah, Santa Barbara doesn't get a chance to beat up on somebody this week. They have really been on fire. So I'm quite sure Santa Barbara is far more disappointed than Long Beach State because Santa Barbara is playing uh, some basketball. Now, tonight's players of the game presented by Under Armour, official outfitter of CSUN Athletics. AZ, do the honors. Oh, I'd, I'd be glad to. And, and tonight, it's it's another easy one in, in the sense of Elijah Pepper. I mean, Elijah Pepper, 7 of 10, because all from the field, 4 of 5 from behind the three-point line, 9 rebounds. He had 18 points. He had an assist. He had two steals. So, Mr. Pepper, uh, he tonight, uh, he came back and, and played the way you and I both know that he could. Elijah Red Hot Chili Pepper doing the job for UC Davis. How about for the uh, Matadors? Yeah, well, I'm going to say it again. Maladech. That means excellent or good or whatever, but it's going to be Alex Merkvaladze. Alex Merkvaladze, he, he, he kind of showed us what we saw in practice early on and, and what he his very first game when he played against Westmont. He had 16.7 rebounds, uh, 6 of 8 from the, fo the floor, 2 of 5 from behind the arc. And so I, I thought that he just played his best game of the conference so far. And the Matadors are going to need that. They're going to need him to be consistent. But I th and so maybe they'll, he'll always have to have one of his former teammates on the bench of an opponent. But uh, I, I think Alex tonight showed what he can give the Matadors. And hopefully the next time he has that time of, type of performance, other guys will uh, step up and help him. Well, uh, uh, like Nick Nolte in season one of The Mandalorian, Alan Zinsmeister has spoken. Players of the game tonight for the CSUN Matadors, Alex Merkvaladze for the uh, UC Davis Aggies. Player of the game is Elijah Pepper. Before we sign off, I want to say thank you to several people. Of course, our sports information ace, uh, Nick Bocanegra, and of course, the great Eric Bankston, the sports information director for UC Davis men's basketball. Technical director on Big West TV is Matt Monroe. The game day managers here at the Matadome, Jared Garcia and Robbie Ant, and of course, our great general manager, for Learfield IMG at CSUN Matador Sports Properties. That is the pride of St. Louis, Missouri, the great Will Carter. Uh, final score tonight, 75-63, the silver medal for the Matador as they lose to UC Davis. So the next broadcast is up in the air. So right now, uh, nothing is scheduled. The Matadors, for those obviously who, who, who don't know, were scheduled to go and play at Grand Canyon on Friday. That game has been canceled due to a variety of COVID protocols, and it bums me out because our guy Jordan Jackson is now over at Grand Canyon, so we would have gotten a chance to see him. Um, so the next broadcast is kind of up in the air. Check with GoMatadors.com or on Twitter. I'm sure there will be updates this week if we do end up playing next week. And you heard Mark Gottfried. Um, they're going to practice as if they have a game this week, and if somebody falls out, they're available to reschedule something. Because all I, I have a feeling they're going to get a chance to play. Something is going to break their way. I mean, it broke their way when they got a chance to uh, have play Fullerton, and so I think they might get a chance to either play Irvine or or uh, Long Beach State or something. So I think something's going to break their way. Uh, final thoughts, AZ. Matadors, I was very, very impressed with the way they played in the second half. I'm uh, extremely impressed with the Aggies uh, because they're a team that was picked to finish third in the conference. They had lost their first three games, and uh, they, they stepped up tonight to show why people picked them so high. But the Matadors held their own, started off slowly, started off sluggishly, and uh, good teams make you pay for that. 75-63 the final tonight. We don't know exactly where... Um, the final, the next game is going to be, so stay tuned for that. When there is a next game scheduled, Alan and I will talk to you then. Uh, for Alan Zinsmeister, my name is Ghazal Hassan. Until next time, so long, everybody. Good night, Lou. Good night, Arthur. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College under broadcasting rights granted by CSUN. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of CSUN and Learfield IMG College. 
Announcers are provided by Learfield IMG College and approved by CSUN.